All right, everybody, welcome to our very, very, very first spontaneous scattering the first. Um, as you are all aware, it is COVID times and live theater is really not the best option right now, especially in our little theater space at seats 30. So what we have opted to do instead is to perform for you over Zoom. So yay, uh, sorry for the delay. It's all my fault. You can just blame everything on me. Um, I will happily take that reality. Uh, but the, for those of you who don't know who I am, I am Christine Weems. I'm the artistic director of The Scattering. My right-hand man who is on my left, but he's on the screen is Josh Baker. He basically has run the whole show and is fabulous in that regard. For those of you who are not familiar with what a scattering is or the smattering that it is based off of, it is our 24 hour play festival. It is exactly what it sounds like. Yesterday at 7 p.m., the 10 playwrights met on a Zoom call and uh, we randomly picked out of a hat actors that they had to include in their plays, the genre that they specifically had to write for, as well as some other parameters that they had to write in their 10 page masterpiece the results of which you are about to see uh, at nine o'clock in the morning. Everybody reconvened. And then basically they started rehearsing. Uh, they rehearsed over Zoom. You're gonna be, you're gonna see the shows they are all performed over Zoom. These plays were specifically written. Uh, I was about to say they were specifically written to be performed over Zoom, but I can't guarantee that because the playwrights, you know, they can take one of two options with it. They could either say, I'm going to be really nice and write this play knowing that it's going to be performed over Zoom. And so we want to make sure it's as easy as possible for the actors and the teams. Or they could just write whatever they want and say, after 9 a.m., not my problem. And then it goes to the directors and the actors to figure it out. So I'm not 100% sure which way our 10 playwrights went. Uh, it can go either way. But uh, we, you'll, you'll get to see the results of it and you get the joy, the happiness to comment. I see so many people, including a lot of people who are in the show commenting on the chat. Obviously, please keep it clean because anybody can see it, but do enjoy it, utilize it, chat with people. I mean, it's kind of like Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's, it's, it's all the fun and, and the side commentary and the humor. Uh, and just so that you know, when the show, as it is now permanently recorded on YouTube forever and forever and ever, so does all of your chats. So um, apparently I don't show up for some of you. It's not personal. I'm just saying. Uh, thank you, everybody, for wishing me a happy birthday. It is my birthday today, and that becomes really important when I talk to you about the parameters. So here's the thing that all the playwrights that had to include in their plays. They had to write a 10-page play. Uh, they had to find a celebrity who shares their birthday and cor incorporate them into their play. And that came as a result, as I was informed yesterday, that I share a birthday with Michael Strahan. So uh, he would be my celebrity. It's either him or Goldie Hawn. I'd been, Goldie Hawn was my birthday twin for years. So all the playwrights had to do a little homework, find a celebrity who shared their birthday and incorporate them in their play. Uh, they also had to tell an origin story of a nickname, and that nickname could be a person, a place, a thing, anything. Somehow in the course of their play, they had to tell us the origin story of that nickname. Um, there had to be an item that traveled. Uh, and what I mean by that is an item had to travel from one screen to another. Like if I was to ha hand something off screen, Josh would pick it up on the other end and it would look like it magically traveled from one person to another, even though we're all in our little boxes. And then the line that everybody had to include was, I wanted to be a blank when I grew up, but then blank happened. The reason why I'm telling you all of these things is because some, as some of you may know, we do voting, we do awards. So I have a whole lot of these cute little pink cones and the great thing about these little pink cones is that A, they're super easy to ship, but B, it's very indicative of our company. We've been giving away smattering cones for winners of smatterings for, for years, literally years now, 13 of them, and we're going to keep doing it uh, for this first scattering. So um, at the end of the whole show, you are gonna get the opportunity to vote on best use of genre, best use of celebrity, 
birthday incorporation, best use of nickname origin story, best use of line, best use of traveling item, cast that look like they had the most fun, best actor, best actress, as well as best script and best in show. Um, for information as to where you can find the ballot, if you go to conemanrunning.com, which is our website, you will see two things. Uh, if you go to a link at the top, it'll say scattering voting, click on that. And when you click on that, it'll pull up a web page that has the ballot and it's super easy. You put in an email address and then you just drop down. You go to best use of genre and then you pick which one of the 10 plays you thought use the genre the best. So it's very, very, very easy. And then when you're done, you hit submit. By the way, any ballot that is received before the show actually ends, you're not gonna count. So no cheating. You'll also see a program there. So there's a, um, a link there where you can click and it'll say it's a scattering program. You click on the PDF, it's got everybody's bios. It's got everybody's smiling faces. So if you need to remember, oh, I don't remember the name of that actor to find out who they were for best actor award or best actress award, you can look in the program, figure out who they are and vote for them. Um, but that also has a reminder of what all the genres are, all the play titles, who all the playwrights are, all of those things. Um, by the way, if you look in some of the bios, I encourage you to read all the bios. Some of them are very, very funny. If you see some random ellipses in the middles of people's bios, it's because some people don't understand the meaning of the word 50 word bio. And so they sent me longer bios. And so I just started cutting and that's what the ellipses are. So if you want to know what the ellipses are in some people's bios, just go ask them. Cause I just indiscriminately chop stuff out to make room. Um, that being said, Josh, is there anything that you want to add before we start the show? Sounds good to me. Uh, I know that we we're doing uh, donations for saving the space to try to keep it going for live theater when we can do it again. So uh, appreciate everybody's donation for that. But uh, you know the the fight's still going on. The donations still there, and otherwise, uh, I've really enjoyed seeing the shows this week or the today. So looking forward to uh, everybody else enjoying them as well. Yes, and that's a great point. Thank you. The whole point of the scattering was this was a thank you to everybody who donated money. We, uh, Our doors of our physical space, for those of you who know, we have a little 30-seat home at Spring Street Studios. We're literally about to open David L. Williams Separating the Art in March, and we had to close the space because um, uh, Harris County kind of shut things down, and so that caused us to have to shut down. and. We have not been able to open up our theater space in the intervening uh, nine, eight months, nine months, eight months. But, you know, we see the light at the end of the corner. So part of what we were trying to do is we're, we're doing a, a push to try to make sure that we can keep our little home. So we thank, so thank everybody for your help and your donations. Uh, that's what this show is. Um, but to be clear, we haven't closed down entirely. We've been busy. Uh, for those of you who... Uh, are interested in podcasts or kind of want to hear some of the creative stuff we've been uh, up to. We started a War of the Words podcast in, Ma in May. Um, to date, we've dropped 80 episodes and have produced 117 original audio plays. A lot of the work uh, from a lot of our voice actors who are part of the War of the Words, who finally get to see their faces here in the scattering. So I'm very, very excited about that. We also produced with assistance from the Houston Arts Alliance and a digital grant that they provided us, the Cone Man Capers, which was our first foray into live streaming theater, which is kind of what gave us the confidence to do this show. Uh, if you want to see any of the capers, uh, Murder on the Deep Blue Sea, it's really more of a bay. You can find them all on our YouTube channel, as well as this show. After the show's over, you can forever see it on our YouTube channel. And we hope you continuously enjoy it over and over and over again. So that being said, I'm going to introduce the first show, and then I'm going to vanish and watch it, just like all of you. So the very first show we have for you this evening is Hell on Plastic Wheels by Ben Plopper. It was directed by Kelsey Finstead. And the actors are Rachel Brownhill, Jenny Grabowski, Helen Rios, and Melissa Rodriguez. The genre is sport. So I'm going to vanish. I'm going to let them take it away. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Roller Derby Competition and the Hal Linden Community Athletic Facility and Rehab Center. 
Today, the United States takes on the United Kingdom for the revolutionary rematch of the century. The Boston Tea Party, part two. The Boston Bee Party. The rumble starts in just a few minutes, so take your seats. Jessica Williams, your sexaholic support group is now meeting in room 205. Uh, it's supposed to be anonymous, asshole. Well, not anymore, it isn't. Wow, I can't believe we're really here. What? Why? Are you hallucinating or something? No, I just, I meant it's like a dream come true. Oh my God. If you're dreaming, please don't wake up. I don't want to die. No, I just, well, I never thought I was going to skate again, not after. Are you hallucinating or something again, Lucy? Or are you thinking really hard? My face looks like that when I'm thinking. <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking. I was just remembering something. Oh, I forget things all the time, like where my car keys are. <laughs> you don't have a car. Oh, yeah, I forget that too. <laughs> That's probably why I can't find my car keys. <laughs> well, well, well. If it isn't Lucy Lips and Danny Dunn. Oh my God, it's sporty and scary spice. I love you guys. I tell you what I want, what I really, really want. So tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Oi, watch it, bird. Jackie Ripper and Arsenic Lace, I assume. In the flesh. <laughs> the cold flesh of the grave. Dead flesh is mostly room temperature, unless you store it in a walk-in freezer in a closed Whataburger in Rowena, Texas. Well, that was oddly specific. <laughs> trying to get in our, oh yeah. Trying to play little mind games. Give us a little scare. Is it working? <laughs> the devil is my master. I fear nothing. It is you who should be afraid. <laughs> Listen, you Yanks had better be ready for a beating out there. Cause you're gonna pay for the tea, you bloody lot, tossed in blood, sweat and tears. Just like Chattanooga in all five. All right, Lucy? What? Oh, Lucy, can you come check my skates? Oh God, I have to get out of here. As a trouble soul, I see chaos and tragedy in her past. I like this vibe you've got going. Uh, I dabble in the force of darkness and pain. Uh-huh. Hot topic? Do not mock what you don't understand. Or is it Wish? Oh my gosh. One time on Wish, I accidentally clicked on a picture of a dildo, and now all I see from them are sex toys. It's just penises everywhere. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Nothing the courts could prove. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we all have demons nestled in the dark corners of our mind, whispering temptation to us. Whisper, whisper, whisper. Exactly. Like an ex-boyfriend in your basement yelling, help! Help, somebody call the police. She's gonna kill me, she's crazy. That was an odd metaphor. A what? The contest starts in one minute. Ladies, please line up. Would the owner of a duffel bag of <clears throat> novelty marriage aids please see the front desk? Well, I'll see you out there, good luck. And if you try to pass me, I'll rip your tits out with a claw hammer. Bye. Uh, uh, Come on, love. We need to line up. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, uh, that, that little uh, that little one is a, a nutter. Oh, relax. It's just a bit like your ooh dark witchy thing. It is not a thing. I am a master of the dark arts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. Look, listen. I didn't make it this far to lose to a bunch of colonials, right? I punched my first soccer hooligan when I was nine years old. And my dad 
Taught me everything about skating was in the notorious roller gang, the Glitter Boys, on the mean streets of London. Uh, I don't think that was a gang. Yeah, of course it was. Bunch of mad lads they were. Now look, I need your head in the game. And I want you on that flight, you all right? Oh, mm, mm, uh, oh no. Mm, now, no, I got no. Lucy. She's got a past I can exploit. <laughs> Speaking of past, uh, I'm not sure I'm supposed to be anywhere near that Danny Dharma. Um... What if that's, that's her real name and not a super scary nickname? Did Jeffrey Dahmer have any kids? Oh, please, you can handle a little girl. Now, come on, let's go, come on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get this jam started. But before we begin, we want to wish a very happy birthday to Hal Linden. He's not actually here, but since this is the Hal Linden Community Athletic Facility and Rehab Center, we are contractually obligated to mention it. So ladies, on your mark, get set, go! Ugh. I'm coming after you, Lucy Lips, right on your boot. I'll put a boot right up your ass. Yeah, that's proper English for a trunk. Well, I knew that, but I'm still gonna put a boot, well, an American boot, I'm not talking about a car trunk. I'm gonna shove an American boot right up your ass, or I guess your arse. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you're shoving boobs up asses in Chittanooga. What? <laughs> Be gone. No, no, get, 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 get. Get out of my head. She looked up to you and you let her down. No, I didn't mean to. Oh, yeah, you did. You were too big of a star to properly lace up her skates. No. And then she fell because of you. <laughs> Just stop it. Learn it some dollars, sit a lot. Ah! Get him off of me! Oh my god, get him off of me! Consequent at peace, elite. Ah! <laughs> That's how that little girl ended up getting a film degree. You ruined her life! Stop it! I'm telling you, hydrochloric acid can handle anything. Oh, but how did you get that much? I know a guy. I'll give you his number. Oh, fabulous. Hey, fabulous. you want to go out for mag margaritas after this race? <gasps> that would be lovely. Yeah, and then you can tell me more about all those ceremonial knives you have. If I, yeah, hey. Huh? Uh, it is not my fault what happened to that little girl. And communication degrees are very popular. Oh, they're useless. I will not let you win. Why are you torturing me? Because I was that little girl. What? <laughs> not really. I just wanted to slow you down so I can make my move. Not today. Ah! Ah! That's it. The match is over. If everyone can clear out the senior citizens pole dancing finals are up next. Oh, can't believe they disqualified all of us. You did punch me. Oh, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. I deserved it. You've got a mean swing. You should, you should come be hooligans with me back home, eh? Uh, and I guess they objected to casting the dark magic. <laughs> Those bugs were super real. Uh, I really thought it was just a lot, you know, putting on a bit of a show, yeah? <sighs> You know, I always wanted to be the greatest roller derby competitor in the world when I grew up. Then Chattanooga happened. But what about you guys? Any deep truths that you learned about yourselves?
Yeah, were we supposed to learn something? Uh, oh, Danny knows an acid guy. Well, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh. Let's have a big round of applause for Agnes Mortenhauer's routine to ACDC's You Shook Me All Night Long. I don't know about the rest of you, but I will never be able to look at hard candy and a quart of motor oil the same way again. Jesus, this is what I get for going with communications in college. I need a goddamn drink. The end. Yay, everybody should pop out and curtain call. The beautiful faces. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Lovely job, ladies. Lovely job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we're going to smoosh you out and smoosh in the next group. So while they're getting set up, we're still working on some technical difficulties. Like I accidentally hit my uh, on video button partway through awkward so sorry about that i was just spectating from afar um so i think while josh is going to load up everybody from the second show they uh, should be all in. are they are they all in they're working on it okay we're still working on it we're figuring it out um i can tell you a little bit about it it's by our lovely friend chris thompson uh the great part about doing things like scattering is that we can Work with some more friends from afar. Chris is a playwright who usually has to come drive down, hang out with us in Houston for the smattering weekend. But this time she's been able to do the whole thing from the comfort of our own home. Um, oh my God, I feel like I'm all alone now. Uh, the play is, yeah, my parents dance naked in the moonlight, what of it. Um, you know, before I introduce it, I'm gonna wait for everybody else to pop in. Suddenly I'm in this room all by myself. Hi, everyone. Uh, no, I don't have the copyrights to this background. I don't know what you're talking about, Kelsey. It's just lovely clouds and hardwoods. Look at all the lovely people popping in, uh, getting themselves ready. Um, and then, gosh, so this is the cast. So it's, yay, my parents dance naked in the moonlight. What of it by Chris Thompson. It's directed by Lisa Walker. The actors are Helen Baker, Megan Nix, Dan Potter, and Johnny Ringo. The genre is a fish out of water. Josh, we ready to go? Uh, give me just a second while I pin everybody in uh, okay. so we can try to get the spots that we need. Fantastic. Um. Hope everybody's having a good time. Checking out the chat on occasion. You aren't getting too crazy here we go we should be ready to go christine all right well then here is yeah my parents dance naked in the moonlight what of it by chris thompson Oh, Doctor, arrive! She is late! Call thyself, woman. She will arrive when she arrives, but not till then. No, the journey from New York is long and treacherous. Oh, I fear something terrible has happened to her. Thy fretting gets her not here quicker. Prithee, come sit. Sit, thy pacing is giving me the gases. <gasps> Wait, I hear something. Someone arrives. Oh, Marion! Yes. My darling girl, thou art a sight for sore eyes. Oh, Dad, I missed you guys. Where art thou bags, dear? John, fetch her bag. Uh, actually, um, I brought more than just my bag. There's someone special I'd like you to meet. Uh, Dan, come on in. Um, oh, oh, no, just... Uh, did we interrupt you too? Were you about to go out to a costume party or something? <laughs> Mom, Dad, this is my boyfriend, Dan. <laughs> oh, Marion, oh, a suitor at last. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mom. I just never brought anyone home for you guys to meet. Uh, Dan, this is my mom, the Lady Lizbeth of Cheshire. Good morning. I'm sorry, like like the cat? 
<laughs> a cat? No, silly, like Cheshire, like of this city, Cheshire. <laughs> this is my dad, John the Red of Fletfjord. Dad, meet Dan. Dan? Dan of what? Of, of um, of, uh, 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 uh of Manhattan? <laughs> is this a joke? Do, do you think I'm a jest? No, 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 no. I, I just, I, I was, um, I, I didn't, I was just. Oh, please, please, pretty, sit down, sit down. Oh, didst thou have enough to eat on thy journey? Oh, mayhaps you would like a morsel. Oh, a snack would be great. Oh. So, Dan of Manhattan. Do you ride? Ride? Um. Oh. Oh, 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 oh horseback. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I don't ride. I'm a subway man through and through. <laughs> Do you hunt? No. Fish? Mm -mm. Track? No. Eat fire? Juggle? Do you have any skills? Well, I mean, uh, the, uh, 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 actually, I uh, was the National Collegiate Table Tennis Association champion for uh, two years. <laughs> Table tennis. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Dan, why don't you tell Dad what you do for a living? <laughs> Dad, I'm sure you'll find it super impressive. Oh, well, I, I don't know if it's super impressive. Uh, I happen to work for Hugsky Bangers and Mash. <laughs> Hugsky Bangers and Mash. Oh, my. <laughs> it's your little, uh, uh, little Wizard of Oz joke. Yes, I, I'm a lawyer. <laughs> Pettifogger. Uh, petty, uh, I'm sorry, what was that you said again? I, uh, yes. <laughs> Yes, and one day it will be Hoogski, Bangers, Mash, and Cranston. Yes, of course. Now, that'll ruin our little Wizard of Oz bit, but... <laughs> Cranston. Oh, why does this name seem familiar? Oh, Dan's Uncle Brian is an actor. Maybe you've seen him on Breaking Bad? Uh, well, here's a fun, ba fun fact about Uncle Brian. So he was adopted and on his birth certificate, it said he was born March 9th. However, in his 20s, he found his birth mother and she assured him that his birthday was March 7th. A mother would know. I mean, a simple clerical error and you spend your whole life thinking your birthday is one day and then not another. <laughs> oh my God, turkey legs. Oh, it's been so long. Uh, Marion. Marion. Uh, yes, dear? Uh, honey, <laughs> honey, we're, we're vegetarians. Uh, a veggie what? <clears throat> oh, right, yes. <laughs> So good, but uh, yes, uh, I no longer partake in the flesh of animals. Flesh of animals? Mayhaps something else. Oh, leftover Scotch eggs. <laughs> Those are literally covered in sausage. <laughs> sausage on a stick? <laughs> Again, no sausage. Uh, meat pies. Literally says meat in it, Mom. Oh, funnel cake. Oh my God, funnel cake. Yes, it's been so long. Oh, I'm afraid we may have any powdered sugar left. May have something else? We'll decline, but thank thee greatly for thy fond opportunity of food. Oh, well, there is one more offering, should ye care to hunt for it. But it is not food, yet thou shalt fancy it most well, I am sure. Hide and seek presents. Oh, <laughs> this has been too long. <laughs> Didn't I tell ye that my folks were special? <laughs> special? 
special. Yes, that that is the word she used. Special. <laughs> uh, so so hide and seek present uh, is is that a, a regional thing? You see, my family we we didn't do that growing up. No, in fact, we only exchanged gifts during Christmas. Ah, oh, I remember many Christmas times when I was wee. Oh, but then I married and I converted. Judaism. Paganism. Oh, oh. What is it you think he knows about paganism? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Surely now knows something, no? Gosh, no. Well, yeah, I mean, only, only what you see on TV, you know, the, the sacrificial goats and, and um, uh, oh, well, naked women dancing in the moonlight, just, you know. Well, truth be told, I do dance make naked in the moonlight from time to time. <laughs> uh, we both do, but that has nothing to do with paganism. Actually, we celebrate nature, life, and harmony in a natural way. Hi, <laughs> Dan, I forgot to tell you I was raised pagan. Uh -huh. Is my baby Oh, oh boy, oh, dear, you, you look stunning. <laughs> Thank thee. Oh, mom, this dress, tis divine. Hey, Marion the dancer. <laughs> dancer? Uh, I wanted to be one when I grew up, but then when I was five, our pet elephant, Julie, uh, she sat on me breaking 42 of my bones. Oh my God. But she may be called Julie Airmore. After she sat on Marion, she then became known as Bad Juju. She be out back if thou would like us to meet her. <laughs> would, would I like to meet an elephant that's your pet who sat on Marion? as a child whose name is Bad Juju and happens to be in your backyard right now? <laughs> oh, heck yeah. <laughs> oh, well, follow me, young lad. <laughs> this is the first one that you have brought home. In sooth, how worried should I be? Pretty worried. I love him, Da. Love him. Mayhaps we will get lucky and bad juju will sit on him. <laughs> uh, Daddy. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Who doth falleth in bad juju poo poo? That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> bad luck the airlines doth lost your luggage and just my clothes to do. And no one would fit. I'll fetch you me britches. Oh my. Oh, dost thou know what fetch ye me britches mean amongst men? I do not. Oh, well, once a Viking man gives another man his own britches, that man can then ask for the hand in marriage of the first man's eldest daughter. Uh, Methinks father knows not of this tradition. Oh, he knows of it well. Oh, why, that is how we were once bound together amongst the ribbon ceremony. Oh. Uh, Dan, do not worry about this silly tradition. Not one will expect us to marry because you fell into a pile of elephant shit. <laughs> I mean, who? <clears throat> Dan of Manhattan, I offer thou my breeches. Uh, may you wear them surely, and they offer you strength, comfort, and uh, no holes. <laughs> Thank thee. Thank thee, John of Red, of, of Flicking Floor, husband to the gracious. Elizabeth of Cheshire, and father to the beautiful and full of surprises, Maid Marian. Oh, I pray I will wear them well and for always, as I hope that you, 
Maid Marian will wear my ring forever oh. and always. Oh, Dan, I will. Oh, Marian betrothed at last. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. Now, darling, the first thing I would like to wish to say to you, my love, my betrothed, my husband-to-be, yes. my love forever yes. and always. Yes, my dear, what, what is it? Oh my God, dude. Go shower, smell like shit. Yay! Everybody bows. Wonderful, delightful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, show two. That was yay, my parents dance sick in the moonlight. What of it? Y'all may move off. I know it's so hard to not get live applause by people other than me. Um, and then we move into the third show. All right. Josh, you let me know when everybody's ready. I'm working on it. I know. Got to pin everybody in place. So apologize with some of the technical difficulties is that uh, we try to pin people into the places they need to be, but they need to actually show videos. So it ruins part of the magic and the illusion for you for just a hot second. Um, but uh, we hope, again, that you are looking for all the things that you get to vote for, like the best use of passing things from one screen to another or the best use of that spatula so that you're aware the reason we chose a spatula is we were trying to think of something that everybody would have that would still be an unusual thing that you could use in multiple different places and josh being the brilliant person he is uh thought a spatula would be a great idea and then apparently said that if you didn't have one you could go to spatula city but i never saw the weird owl movie so that reference was completely lost on me so Hopefully. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you did. Hopefully it means something to the rest of you. And so, we're ready to go. We ready to go? Yes, ma'am. All right. So next we have The Ballad of Setback Shane by Cassie Randall. And uh, it's directed by Lauren Hanley and is entirely populated by a cast of first-time smatterers slash scatterers. And I'm so proud of them for just jumping in and doing it. Brian Kondrak, Reed Halverson, Kazem Makani, and Shara Gilbert. Oh, well, hey there, sugar britches. Haven't seen the likes of you around these parts in a while. And I do like what I am seeing. Oh, the name's uh, Diamond Clam, and I'm here the proprietor, the singer, the server, the bartender, and the lap entertainment of this here establishment. Now, what can I get you, sugar britches? Whiskey. Oh, fine it is. Here you go. Oh, you're a thirsty one. I bet you could drink an entire horse trough, yeah. Another. Oh, here you go. Here's another one. Oh my goodness. You really know how to get a girl all revved up, don't you? I know just what you need. Double time. You know, I always didn't like to have a drink with a pretty lady. Oh, well, uh, you just certainly know how to sweet talk somebody, but I'm not one for whiskey, sorry. Got no complaints from me. Well, well what's, a, what's a burly little beautiful man like you doing a little shithole town like shit post mouth? How to wager, nothing but trouble. Hmm. Oh. Diamond clam, I'll take a whiskey. Mm, yes, yeah, coming right up. Here you go. One whiskey. Hmm. Ain't nothing brought me in here but the wind on my back and the road on my feet. Hmm. Yeah, that's what they all say. And then they get all tangled up here with diamond clam. Next thing you know, there's a shootout in the main square at old shit's mouth port. 
Oh my goodness. You know how I love a good shootout over me. Oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh. How many is that for you now, Diamond Clam? Oh, let's see. Uh, I think it was just 11 last week. Oh. Mm-hmm. All 11 of them. Fine young men gunned down in their pram. Mm-hmm. And just think, I only got to sleep with two of them before old Billy Blades came in here and took care of business. Billy who? He the, ha- the town sh- hot shot? Oh, yeah. he's a lot of things. Oh, he's very hot. He's not the brightest, but he can do some things with his toes that you wouldn't believe. I mean, men like him always showing off uh, what they can do with them toes. Takes more than dealing a hand of poker uh, with your toes to impress me. Hmm. Mm. No. Oh, that's not all he can do. Oh, they man can stir a pot of soup with his toes. That don't sound very appetizing. No, it's not. Oh, but then he ladles it up with those beautiful toes. And I'll tell you what. Oh, my, my, my. Mm. Oh, he also plays a mean honky talk with them mm-hmm. foot fingers. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, that man's toes have serenaded scores of folks coming through this here saloon. Mm-hmm. Uh uh-uh, uh, but toes ain't what makes Billy Bo Blaze the pride and joy of this here shit's mouth court. Mm-hmm. No, I can't I, I, imagine what would be better than a poker dealing soup ladling honky tonk playing, uh, you know. But go ahead. Well, that man keeps me in business. What kind of business is that? Well, Frank Wayne over there is the town of Undertaker. Mm-hmm, that's right. As long as Billy Bo Blaze keeps them uh, bodies stacking, uh, life's pretty good for old Frank Wayne here in Shit's Mouth Port. Mm-hmm. Everybody here wishes they could be have the life of Frank Wayne. Uh, live it, be in the town of, you know, Undertaker is quite the glamorous lifestyle. You always want to be an undertaker in a shithole town? Shit's mouth, poor. I know. Huh. Sigh. When I was little, I wanted to be a cowboy. Oh, but then uh, my uh, horse allergy kicked in. And I also happened to be allergic to hay and grass and dust and sweat. Tragic, tragic dream, really. Shot down in its infancy. Yeah, I suppose I should have a drink hmm? to the memory of young, j- young Frank Wayne and his uh, pre-allergy dreams of grandeur. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cheers. But so now, stranger, you tell me, what's your story? Nothing much to tell. I've lived the life of a rover since I was knee high to a grasshopper. Oh, I bet you were just an adorable little baby. And I bet you'd make some really good looking babies too. Mm. Indeed I was, ma'am. Young, dumb, and hopeful. But then the light, crushed the light and spirit out of me quicker than a grease pig and jump a hog fence. Oh, you poor baby. Mm, 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 indeed. All I ever wanted in life was to uh, meet my hero, my role model, my reason to keep on living, you know, Mr. Bill Nye. Oh. It was supposed to be worth it. I was going to meet him on his birthday, November the 27th. I was going to tell him how much I loved him. How much he taught me about science, life, and love. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, my. Oh, my. And then when I met Mr. Bill Nye, he was a dick. What? You don't say. That. Poor, adorable little baby setback Shane. Indeed, indeed. Hmm. Well, I, I damn wondering of... Uh, Whereabouts do you get that name from, uh, uh, Setback Shane? Mm-hmm. After I was flattened by the defeat from Bill Nye being a dick, my grandpappy took me over the knee and said, Sonny boy, what happened to you today was just a setback. That's all. You'll get the chance to meet a new role model someday. And my grandpappy choked on a bit of a dried chicken skin and then he uh, died right in front of me. Oh, oh, poor, sweet, baby, baby, back, set back, Shane, with rib sauce. Oh, oh, oh. What a way to go. Hmm. Oh, well, how about I close up this saloon a little earlier, and we go upstairs and play a little bit of hog calling, hog pulling, toe time, huh? 
Now I know you ain't moving in on my girl like that. Oh, Billy Blaze, you behave yourself now. I don't need you fighting over me again today. Mm -hmm. No, no, you uh, calm down, girl. Uh, if uh, Billy Bull Blaze wants to have a shootout in the main square of Shit's My Port, well, ain't nobody gonna stop him. Uh, oh, that reminds me, I better go check on my back the catalog of coffins. Uh, now, uh, Billy Bull Blaze, don't you go getting too far into it until I get back. Ain't no one moving in on anyone else's girl, partner. Now don't you call me partner, friend. Oh, now boys, 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 I don't want you fighting around here, but if you need to do something honorable, you need to fight it the old fashioned way by taking those shirts off and wrestling. I'm a glam. You keep out of this. Now look, stranger, you come riding in to shit's pork mouth. Trying to feel up my girl, looking for trouble. Well, huh, huh, guess what? You found it. Right in this muscle. Oh, oh, that bicep. Oh, in this muscle. Oh, Billy Blaze, you stopped there before you sent me over the edge. And these muscles. Those forehead muscles. Oh, dear sweet baby Jesus. What's happening? I heard you screaming. You all ain't having a shootout in the main square of shit sport mouth without me. Oh, oh, no, 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 Frank Wayne. Oh, that was just little old me squealing my appreciation for Billy Blaze's oh, copious muscles. <laughs> oh. oh, well, it's all right then. I say, uh, Billy Blaze, you wouldn't um, want to do that again now, would you? What? This? Oh, 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 yes, How about these? Oh, oh that name. Oh, They're beautiful name. Oh, creation. Oh, and then maybe yes. Uh, now, now what comes next? Ah, uh, shoot. I'm trying to remember. Uh, no, 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 did the bicep. Right, did the bicep. And then, uh, oh, I did that knee. Right, I did the knee. And then, uh, yeah. Your face muscles. How can I forget? Oh! Oh. Oh, yes. Oh. Well, uh, well oh. that's that, man. Gentlemen, shall we take this outside to the main square of Shit's Port Mountain, have ourselves a shootout. I have two of my finest top of the line coffins all warmed up and waiting. Yeah, it's you and me in the middle of the main square of Shit Port's Mouth. <laughs> no, thank you kindly. Wait, what? What are you, what, what are you talking about? You, you, you can't Turn down and shoot out. There you go. please. A shoot out. Yay! A shoot out! <laughs> Wait, uh, what's happening? Uh, I, 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 Billy Bo Bleeds, uh, this man here is insulting you by refusing the duel. He is? Yeah, uh, yes, he is. He, in fact, now, uh, not only will you have to defend your honor, you have to defend uh, 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 Jam Claw's honor, too. Yeah, 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 you're, you're right. Oh, ho, ho, ho. your blood is going to stain the main square. That shit pours mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Billy Blaze, Oof, you say that again. You know how I love it when you talk about shooting deaths. Oh, good gracious. Look, Billy Bo Blaze, you seem like an all right guy. How about uh, I buy you the next round of whiskey and uh, we call it a night. Uh... Well, more booze is good business for me. Yeah, no, no. Would I get in on that round? Absolutely. Oh, well, uh, Billy Bo Blaze, uh, let's have a drink with this setback, Shane Feller. I mean, you can always kill him after. Ah! I 
like that plan. Mm. A lot. <laughs> Mama. very much thank you very much i think we all want fanchulas now <laughs> i have to give a lot of credit to this team of newbies who kind of came in for this random excursion and to lauren hanley who did a kick-ass job directing them so good job everybody so we are now moving into the next show uh, Josh is going to take a minute to pin everybody into place and everybody who was in the third show, the ballot is set back, Shane. Go ahead and move yourself back into either your breakout room or leave the meeting, whatever you're comfortable with. While everybody moves in for the next show, which is A Timeless Night in Paris, a Casey Adams classic. Although, you know, while Josh is getting everybody pinned in, you let me know when you're ready, Josh. It's not a Zoom call if there aren't animals. This is Tallulah. This is hey, what's up? <laughs> Cuck's life. Are we Ooh, ready? We are ready. Fantastic. All right. This is A Timeless Night in Paris by Casey Adams. It is directed by Eric Dunlop. It features Sandra Ramsey, Kilo Peterson, and Jason Rivas. And this genre is a period piece. Bienvenue, bienvenue. Please, please do come in. <laughs> Comment ça va? <laughs> oh, pardon moi. I'll be right back. <laughs> Nance, hey, happy new year. Great costume, by the way. I should have known you would go all out. Uh, uh, what are you wearing? I'm a caveman. Obviously, yeah, no, I can see that. <laughs> but um, technically, why? I'm a Cro Magnon, but I didn't figure anybody would be. Too... Why are you a Cro Magnon? Did you know Cro Magnons were discovered in France? No, and that's very interesting, Greg, but I don't. Gerg, know if... actually. What? Uh, my, the name of my Cro Magnon is Gerg. Ooh. Gerg think that see has very fancy party. Gerg, why are you dressed as a caveman, Gerg? Because it's a costume party. Yeah, but it's not a free for all. It's it's themed. Was my invitation not clear? I thought it was clear. Come one, come all, to Versailles for a ball. Be thou noble or pleasant, the night will be pleasant of this New Year's masquerade thrall. Hosted by your Shirley Marie Antoinette. It's spelled out across the top. A timeless night in Paris. Exactly. Timeless. I'm from prehistory. <laughs> Greg, you are being difficult. I already told you, it's Gerg. Oh, that's gotta be him. <laughs> My king has arrived. <laughs> oh, oh, Clive, no. Oh, your jets, babe. Oh. I could have, I just couldn't get behind that rigid, imperialistic view. You dig? No, I do not dig, Clive. <sighs> you said you would do this for me. Ah, don't be a sad sack, Nance. I'm not sad, I'm irritated. This isn't some two-bit sock hop. Who's supposed to be my King Louis? The old world is dead, man. The old world is dead. We have no more king now. Off with his head. Dressing like one of the beat poets. Nice. 
Those guys are wild. Nah, man, I'm finally dressing down, you know? I'm removing the artifacts of the individual and all the stuff around, man. This isn't a costume. This is just how he's been acting ever since we went to some poetry reading a few months ago. He came back this, enlightened and really annoying. This is the future, babe. The new decade is upon us. The 60s will be brought, will be bringing in peace and love for all. And then we're gonna go and conquer the evil capitalist hearts out there in the world. How come you'll commit so fully to the idea of togetherness with the entire universe? But we can't get you to commit to me. Marriage is a social construct, sweetheart. We've already talked about that. <clears throat> I hate that. Everything is counterculture this and down with the establishment that. And I, I am not burning my brazier. You hear me? I need it for support. What radical reading turned you upside down, dude? Any writer can speak to you, but certain lines can really touch you. You feel me? This writer, he's not only famous, but he, he really understands, man. William Carlos Williams. No. Beckett. No. Oh, oh, I hope it's Dr. Seuss's Fox and Socks. That was a game changer. What? Nah. That won't even be published for like five years. Well, forgive me. I live in a state of anachronism. I'm a Cro-Magnon at a fre revolutionary era French party in 1959, you know? It's Bukowski, Charles Bukowski. I have no idea who that is. Me either. My God, am I cursed to walk amongst the Unlightened Philistines of this earth for the rest of my days? That's hurtful, Clive. And I think you know that. Tell us one thing about this guy if he's so famous. He's an incredible writer, a visionary. He's transgressive and angry and dirty and one cool daddy o. That hardly makes him interesting to me. Can you make it more personable? What? Yeah. I'd like to know how he intersects with my life. Okay, fine. Um, he shares a birthday with that friend of yours, uh, Stacy. you know, the one that writes the bad jokes. Oh, Cassie. Look, Casey. Pretty sure her name is Tracy. That one. Now see, that is interesting. Really? Absolutely not. <sighs> well, as interesting as this exchange is, I'm gonna go and check out the hors d'oeuvres. I really wish you could have a real conversation about our future with me, Clive. It's all been done, Nance. The future, the past, we're all swimming in it. Time is a flat circle and we're already in it, but not yet. If you break out into some sort of deconstructed, nonsensical, poetic nightmare right now, I swear. I, this, life, we are all spinning in fruit loops, candy color circles of mistruths. But if we could wind back, slip, crack, switch the tracks, why we pick up slack, Jack? That's a fact. What? What is happening? Oh, what's going on? Uh, uh, ah, hello? I'm gone. What is happening? Hello, oh, Clive? No, no. Clive, where are you? What is going on? What the hell, man? What was that? You, you're surprised that your poem started an earthquake? Since when you screwed you, I thought you were supposed to be revolutionary. We're, we're not at the party anymore. Where are we? Oh my gosh. Did you drug me? Am I in one of your psychedelic tailspins? Look around. Is my body on the floor somewhere drooling? No, this isn't usually how those experiences go. No. Wait. Is that the Eiffel Tower? There's no way. How, how do we get here? 
What is happening? It's a plot contrivance time hop! <laughs> what? It's an unexplained magical moment mm -hmm. that removes you from the life you're used to in order to lend you the time and space to explore the problems you're facing with one another. <laughs> huh? Don't worry. Once you've come to resolution, you'll go back from whence you came. Probably. <laughs> uh, Rococo decadence has led us to this wait, this nightmare. Cheers. That's common. We're not in a different time. We're definitely in a, just in a different place. Oh, Gonjamo Petit Fromage! <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> what? Oh! Sacre Bleu! It is the another wretched noblewoman! Viva la revolution! <laughs> a new year dawns! 1793! Down with aristocracy! <laughs> That's right! Run, despicable woman! Pierre will have your head soon enough. <laughs> hey, that's my girlfriend. You can't just attack her with a baguette. Ooh, that woman is your little croissant. What? That sweet, sweet croissant with brie? I never told her that. Your buttery escargot? Why would I nickname my girlfriend after food? Here in France, all our nicknames are based on foods. For we hunger in the streets for so many things. Love, justice, and just like actual food, we are not doing well. That is why we revolt. See, you guys get it. We have to overturn the system. Tell me, Pierre, what is something that the that you always wanted to do, but the man has held you back from. Oh, monsieur, I wanted to be a classic French mime when I grew up, but then the great mime silencing of 1764 happened. It was devastating. Who had ever heard of a quiet mime? But those miserable elitists quashed our voice. We must take back our humanity. And so we will. This is what Nancy doesn't understand. Let's establish the Imperium. That's right, monsieur. Break out the guillotine. Yes! Wait, what? How are we to enact radical change if we don't lop off a few heads? No, 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 man. I, I'm, I'm talking about revolution through peace and love. Like everyone just sits around and smokes weed all day. And you know, we envision a better future. That sounds suspiciously like what our aristocracy does. No, 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 no. Because it's like, we, we've got to give the people what they want, right? Let them eat cake. <sighs> you have made a fool of me, monsieur. You're Rebellion is as useless as our nobility. Prepare to taste my wrath. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. 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 Oh, my goodness. Oh, you okay? I'm so sorry. Hey, I'm okay, you're good. I mean, you're, no, you're going to go. Really, sorry, I'm going to keep talking. Yeah, you know. No, if I just keep going, you're good. Yeah, yeah. You can't know. speak at once. It's a Zoom <laughs> thing. Nancy. Go ahead, Clive. Nancy, I, I just want to say I'm sorry. Oh, me too, Clive. Maybe you were right. <clears throat> Maybe they're too tied up with this whole cultural revolution. I don't know if it's right for me. After seeing the people rise up, I'm pretty impressed. I'm inspired. Though I do wish they hadn't chased me for so long, I, I sprained my ankle. Nancy, I think I'm ready to talk about commitment. <laughs>
And I'll give you a little more leeway with your poetry readings. Uh, crazy puppets, can we go home now? Sure, great time up, everybody. <laughs> really weird stuff. Very strange, quite enjoyable. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Oh gosh, what is happening? Going backwards. <sighs> Whoa. Thank goodness that's over. And look, it's almost midnight. Happy New Year, dear. Indeed. <laughs> I think we learned a lesson here. How about you, Greg? I've told you, it's Gurg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think the sock puppets probably need to bow too because that was just so delightful. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for a time night in Paris. Oh, so the next one that we've got for you is that when Liz, everybody pop on in and other people pop on out. I think Josh is going to go get them. Uh, nice use of sock puppets, Casey. That that gave me so much joy. I can't even begin to see. Cannot even begin to tell you. Um, plus the baguette fight. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. All right, we got everybody. It's four in this one, right? Some casts have three, some casts have four. So we had double, got to double check. Um, this one might be kind of a sequel. Uh, ironically enough, Smattering Seven was also on my birthday. It was on my 40th birthday, and it was the last time that Brian Maynard drew Crime Heist. And that play that he wrote was I've Had the Crime of My Life. Uh, this play is a Brian Maynard play and it is called I've we ready Josh we are okay uh, this play is called I've had the I've had the crime of my life part two no oh, I missed it up in the program I'll fix it I've had the crime of my life part two double the Chris double the cross it is directed by Sarah Snoozeby and stars Bailey Hampton, Sherry Hopper, Adina Owen and Whitney Zangreen and clearly the genre is crime heist Hello? Who's there? And as well speak up, I can hear you. Guten Tag, mein and Fraulein. This is the Jade Flamingo, yeah? That depends. Who am I talking to, Fraulein? Oh. No, no, no. Your message said no names. Well, I mean your code name. You know, like mine, the Jade Flamingo. Oh, yeah, that's perfect then. Uh, in that case, you can call me uh, Cat O Nine. <laughs> a cat burglar named Cat O Nine? What do you think, you're a Batman villain or something? There's a woman who named herself after a green bird that stands on one leg. Hey, I didn't choose a silly code name at random, you, you know? I earned my name nickname Jade Flamingo Pendant right out from under the nose of the most highly secure facility this side of Fort Knox. <laughs> well then if that's the case why are you calling me to uh, uh how do you Americans say a uh, tag up? You're the most successful and most notorious cat burglar in all of Europe. Hmm, that is true. And I am the hottest jewel thief in all of North America. Well, if you are such hot stuff, then why do you need my help? Because I'm too hot. I've had too many close calls with Johnny Law. Like the time they tried to bust me for pinching the Desmond Diamond at Spontaneous Smattering 7. Spontaneous scattering? Oh, was is das? Smattering. Anyway. I've had to become a master of disguise to avoid the police. That's why I'm being played by a different actress this time. 
Sorry, Lauren. Uh, all right, my friend, you have intrigued me. So then, what is how you say the score? The only score worth keeping, the eye of the tiger. <gasps> so are you in or out? Hmm. Incy mincy, mincy mo. Catch on tiger by his toe. If he hollers, make him cry, cause they're going to steal his eye. <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Mm. The current owner of the jade of the eye of the tiger is none other than the third richest woman in the world. <gasps> Christabel van der Morgan Carnegie Feller, the heir to the combined fortunes of the Vanderbilts, the Morgans, the Carnegies, and the Rockefellers? The very same. I didn't know that she had the eye of the tiger. Nobody does. Then how did you know? Let's just say I did a little insider trading at the van der Morgan Carnegie Feller household. Mrs. Vandermorgen Carnegie fell in. I I've been looking all over for you. Oh, Miss Weems, can't an obnoxiously rich bitch have a little alone time with the only thing in this cruel world that brings her any joy? Oh, the plight of the wealthy is having to endure the lower class. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but um, as your personal assistant, it's my job to tell you when your appointments are. Oh, cancel all of them. I want to be alone with my new treasure. Oh, oh, my, it's, oh, it's so beautiful. Did you get that at the Zales? The eye of the tiger is an invaluable jewel that has been set into a necklace, which is the most beautiful necklace in all of India. Hmm. It is said to be cursed and harm will come to anyone who dares to touch it. You're touching it right now. Nobody likes a smart ass, Miss Weems. Be gone with you. <laughs> be gone with you. What are we in the middle ages? I mean, you could just tell me to leave. I mean, or you could ask me to leave. Um, I don't ask, I demand. And I am getting very close to demanding you to fire yourself. I can't fire myself. I, I, I could quit, but no, I can't quit because if I quit, then you, you'd be up Shit's Creek without a What does that mean? Well, it means that you know, I know where all the bodies are buried, figuratively speaking, and literally. Good point. Rehire yourself and give yourself a raise. But I can't give myself a raise. <laughs> not want to argue with you, I will make you refire yourself. Now, <clears throat> what brought you in here to bother me in the first place? It's time for your meds. <laughs> Mommy loves her little brain candy. <laughs> give me, give me, give me. Give uh, me. Down the hall to the right, Dr. Feelgood is waiting for you. <laughs> <gasps> Hello? Hey, Jade Flamingo, it's Ginger Snap. Who? It's my code name, Ginger Snap, you know, because the red hair. Oh, yeah, right. Hey. So, did you find the eye of the tiger yet? Yeah, yes and no. Okay, so I found it, but Mrs. Vander Morgan Carnegie, she won't let it out of her sight. So, I don't know when I'm going to have a chance to grab it. You won't have to. I'm sending in a pro. What? <laughs> that should be her now. She's undercover, so be prepared. I'll be there just as soon as I can throw together a disguise. <gasps> Bonjour, mes amis. It is I, Fifi, the new maid. Now let's clean it up, you know? Nein, nein, it's, it's no joke, Fraulein. Uh, but really, we should be keeping our eyes on the prize, you know? Wait a minute. Are you French or are you German? Oh, 
where you know a little column A and a little column B. <laughs> so whatever works, sweetie. I, I am so fucking confused right now. Oh, thank you so much, Doctor Feel Good. You always make me feel so <laughs> good. Oh, Miss Weems, you're still here, and you have been fruitful and multiplied. Who is your friend? Oh, yes. Um, she was just leaving. Really? It seems she should be coming to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean. She should be coming on to me. <laughs> Hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Vander Morgan, Carnegie Mellon, are, are you feeling okay? Never been. Oh, Ben, I am just so happy to hear it, Mr. Vander Morgan, Carnegie Fellow. Oh, please call me Christabel. And what should I call you? Hopefully for a good time. <laughs> My name is uh, Fifi. Oh, Fufu, I love it, love it. No, no, Fifi. No, you say Fifi, I say Fufu. A fee fi fo fum I just want to get me some. <laughs> oh, madame, I hardly know you. Oh, let's get to know each other a little bit better. Miss Weems, please have someone send up a bottle of our finest bubbly. I feel like getting snunkered. I'll see what I can scare up. Well, uh, really, I shouldn't. Uh, I'm still on duty, really. <laughs> Dooty, schmooty, booty. Oh, booty, 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 booty. <laughs> oh, let's go and shake our booties. I own a private discotheque. Um, perhaps some um, as your time. You know, I really should get to dusting. Or oh, maybe I should uh, mop the floor. Or oh, maybe perhaps clean the bed. Oh, you know, I could always polish the jewelry. Oh, I love it when you say that word. What? Jewelry? No, bidet. The French accent is so sexy. It makes toilet sound sensual. <laughs> oh, oui, especially if you have the potty mouse. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I think is really sexy? <laughs> jewelry. Oh, really? Well, have I got a sight for your eyes. In fact, it is an eye for an eye. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> Here's your goddamn bottle, bubbly. Mm. Mm. Now, give me the eye of the diver or to cut through a solid jewel. If you have a jewel handy, I'll happily demonstrate. Hey, Flamingo, was that you? How did you know it was me? This disguise was foolproof. Yeah, huh, more like proof that you're a fool. Anyway, you're too late because your pro made off with the eye of the tiger. <laughs> what? No. She was supposed to wait till I'd infiltrated the perimeter. I smell a double cross. Come on, let's find her. Oh, yeah, good luck. Do you know how many rooms are in this house? Why are you holding a bottle of champagne and a shotgun? Because <laughs> I'm gonna do some shots and then I'm gonna take a few more. 
Uh, uh, time out, Ginger Snap. I said from the beginning, no guns. That makes you a mugger, not a jewel thief. Hand it over. Okay. You know. That's better. Ever since I was a little girl, I mean, all I ever wanted was to just grow up and be a high-class jewel thief. But, you know, then all this shit happened. And you know, I just, I, I don't, I don't think I'm cut out for this kind of life. Oh, well, it's a tough life, Ginger Snap. Don't call me that anymore. My name is Christine. Christine Weems. Oh, that's the name of a judge, not a jewelry thief. You know, to be honest, I thought you were going to be the one to double cross me. Nah, what you see is what you get. Bonjour, mes amis. Ugh, look what the curiosity brought to this cat. Ah! I, I, I don't know what's harder to believe, the fact that you got the tiger eye from that overprivileged twat. You came back for us. Yeah, we figured you'd be halfway to Europe by now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perish that thought. It is like my favorite singer, Marlene Dietrich, always said, I am at heart, I'm a gentleman. <laughs> Why don't we, uh, oh, what is the American word? Uh, <gasps> Make a clean getaway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did you go, Miss Weems? Jade Flamingo. <laughs> oh, ladies, you should know better than to cross swords with an obnoxiously rich bitch who is always down for a snitch. <laughs> and that is that. Or oh, my name isn't Christabel. Uh, uh, Vander Morgan Carnegie Philip. Oh, fuck it. I really must change that last name. That was so delightful. Come out and do a bow. Curtain call, beautiful people. <laughs> oh, curses on you, Brian Maynard. Uh, that is like the best birthday present a girl can ask for is to be immortalized by the absolutely lovely and talented Adina Owen. That was way too much fun for words. So thank you. Thank you. And a million times. Thank you, ladies. Please shuttle yourself either off back into your breakout room or you can uh, depart the meeting for now. And we're going to move on into the second half of the show. Yes, you've only had half the fun. Second half of the fun. Um, this one is from Colleen O'Doherty. Lovely, lovely Colleen, who uh, is a classmate of actually Michael Weems and uh, David L. Williams from the University of Nebraska at Omaha. She got roped into hanging out with us during the War of the Words. And uh, we haven't been able to let her go since. So we heart you and are so thrilled that you've come to play with us. Josh, are we all ready? I'm just waiting for a cast member to come back in, like somebody got lost. No, there's only three in this group. No, we got everybody. Looks like we got everybody. No, we have everybody. We don't have everybody. No, no, we don't. We don't have everybody. Yeah, we're down. Mm. We got to take a look. Even in Zoom, we lose people along the way. It happens. It's a very, very real problem. Um, you would think, but that's what happens when you have. 36 actors and 10 directors and 10 playwrights and a lot of shuttling around and it's just, you know, me and Josh pushing and pulling people around. Uh, but it has been one. Are you taking a picture, Ruth? Should I smile? Tell you when you're done. Good? Good? Pretty good? Thank you. 
Um, but uh, yeah, Josh has gone off in search of the wayward actor. Who was it? Who do I have to go yell at? Where did you go, Gary Lee? It kicked me out too. Did it kick you out? <laughs> yeah. He's Maybe. in. All right, yay. Do we have I'm any in. No. Okay. That is the most comfortable I've ever seen you acting, Ruth. I think it's the whole ensemble. Josh, are we good then? Uh, it looks like good to me. All right, cool. So this is Control Alt Five by Colleen O'Doherty. It's directed by Rebecca Bernstein, and it's got Ruth McCluskey, Michael Robbie, and Carrie Lee Sparks. And their genre it's sci-fi fantasy. Oh, pick up Zoe. Oh, she better be okay. Oh, she's never late to movie night. How can she be late? <laughs> Time some bullshit anyway. Well, with her living alone since Alicia, you know, I, I'm just, I worry. And I scheduled this Zoom around her schedule. Bitch, <laughs> this is for fun, booby baby. She's been super not herself, and I hate it when you call me that. I'll call you whatever I want, dear uptight booby baby. For those of you watching at home, if you'd like to do a drinking game during this show, do a shot for every time I say booby. You know what I'm talking about, Connor, booby. Who the hell are you talking to? And what the shit are you wearing? I'm talking to my audience. And this is my costume, duh. Okay, not every day is an opportunity to perform. Life is a stage and I'm going to be the star, booby. If you meant that, then you would have pursued a career as an actor. I'm currently honing my skills, warming up my voice. You're simply a co-star, booby. Stop calling me booby. We talking about boobies again? I'm game. Are carms out yet? That was one time. Oh, please. I've seen your nipples during this pandemic more times than my boyfriends. Oh, that speaks more to your sex life than my exhibitionism. Can I say for, state for the record that you haven't mentioned Zoe's costume? This is not a costume. Not all of us think that we're starring in Big Brother 2020. <gasps> <laughs> well, what's with the Back to the Future aesthetic? I've done it. Done what? I pretty much had to ruin the wiring my my apartment complex, but I managed to create a necromagnetic frequency by using a quantum computer system. I I wish I could un say I understood anything that you just said. Uh, quantum computing isn't real yet, though. It is now. There's a slight error in the algorithm, but I've done it. I can bring her back. Bring back who? Alicia, I'm going to reconstitute her consciousness. That's not possible. Sure it is. And you're both going to help. Did you get the packages I sent you? Yes. Great, get those out and I'll be right back. Do you see why I'm worried now? Just be cool. She's going to deal with it the way she deals with it. Play along. Okay, now put those kind of uh, flat pieces on your head and plug the wiring into the hard drive. So, how you doing these days? You have no chill, booby. You call, call me you? booby one more time and I- Okay, one, I'm fine. So don't look at me like that. I'm more than fine. Two, you have never explained why Jackson calls you booby. Well, let's first settle something. What did you mean that you can bring Alicia back? Not physically. That's crazy talk. But I can reconstitute her consciousness through you two. Like I said, there's a glitch, but you'll see that in a minute and I'll get to talk to her again. I believe you snookums and Carm breastfed till she was five. I did not just reveal that. 
Oh, I get it. Booby baby. <laughs> Here's the glitch. This stupid thing is set to her birthday, February 21st. So I've been getting a lot of famous dead people who have her same birthday, but not her yet. I hold that thought. Jackson, I told you that secret and famous of confidence. Famous like who? I'll show you. Cam, go ahead and hit control alt five on my go, okay? Sure. And go. <gasps> oh, well, this is certainly not what I was expecting for today. Though my stars, I'm as gorgeous as ever. <laughs> oh my God, are you playing Rue McClanahan as Blanche? I fucking love Golden Girls. Well, aren't you the sweetest little thing? I must say, it's nice to be in a real firm body, even if it's just for a moment. Mm. Oh, you are nailing this. You should do improv. It's oh. not a performance. I'll have her hand off the consciousness. Cam, Jackson, both of you hit control alt five on my go. Ready? Go. <sighs> <sighs> My lord, this certainly is new. I oh, simply shit. must cool off. She took over my body. Oh, how did you do that? I told you I did it. I just keep trying to burn through these famous ones. Jackson, uh, Rue, could you hit control alt five again? Sugar, I can do whatever you want me to do. Hmm. <laughs> So this is amazing and everything, but don't you think you need to let Alicia be? Be? Be what? Dead? What the hell is wrong with you? This is certainly not where I anticipated to land in the afterlife. I had hoped for something a little more magical. Alan Rickman, again. I won't be so easily dismissed. Damn it. So I just mean, I don't think it's healthy to dwell on your, your. On my dead wife? Go ahead, just say it. I know she's dead already. Why does That's everyone keep acting like I'm a freak now? That's not what I meant. I just want to help you. And I, I mean, you bring her back and then what? I talk to her. Both of you hit control, alt, delete again. <gasps> I meant I wish to exit the fleshly form. I was quite happily in the afterlife before you came along. You can't possibly like being dead. Nobody oh, can. Our minds were pretty well acquainted and he certainly was. Like, it was his time, so he was completely chill with it. That's so fucking stupid. And if you guys would help me find Alicia, I could stop uh, bothering you. Control, Alt-5. Yes, yes, this horse and pony show. <laughs> Birds in the sky, I know how you feel. Sun yes, up in the sky. Again. And that is trippy and draining, so maybe you should stop. Maybe you should go shut up. I gotta find her. What do you think if she comes back? Are we supposed to share a body? I am not interested in that being John Malkovich exorcist life. It's not forever. It's just... I would get a real... Goodbye. Someone dies suddenly in a car accident and you don't get to say goodbye. I want that. I deserve that. Control all five, God Wait damn a minute. It. I have an idea. Go get something that belonged to her. Fine. Jackson, Jackson, hit the keys. Come back. Oh my God, to have that much talent and drive. I have an idea, but you have to play along. The, the next time you have to be, a... 
Okay, here. What do you want me to do with it? Uh, attach it to the computer and then we'll hit control alt five again. Go. Oh, hey babe, it's me. Me who? No, 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 the keys again, Carm, the keys. Uh, oh. oh, whoa. That was kind of weird. Hey, you. Felicia? God, that took you long enough. Oof. You look good. <laughs> Don't you dare say I do too. I look like Jackson. He's great and all, but not your thing. I, I thought I'd know what to say to you. I'd say there's no rush, but I'm kind of borrowing this. And I like where I am these days. Really? Like, you're okay? I am. I really am. Oh, don't go get me wrong. At, at first, I was kind of pissed, you know? I had all these plans in life, and then they're just gone. <laughs> but I still see you even when you can't see me, and it's so much more chill where I'm at. This world, well, it's a little messed up right now. Yeah, it is. I just miss you all the time. I, I was thinking I could find a way to bring you back. You mean like Buffy season six? Oh no, you can come hang out with me and Alan and Rue and Nina eventually, but leave us be for now. You should be doing something cooler with your new toy, like improving the Tinder algorithm or something. Okay, but can you hold on a minute? I, I gotta reset something. You do a good impression of me. <gasps> Oh my God, are you like actually Elisa right now? Oh yes, but you're definitely killing it. That's totally what I would have said. You should totally do that acting thing. How much longer do you have? I need to go, but I wanted to tell you I love you and you're gonna be okay. I promise. Okay. Time to be done. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God, I need some more whiskey for this. Did you talk to her? Did, did it help? Yeah, it did. Thank you. You know what? I was born to be somebody else. And you, you know what, Bobby, Booby? I'm going to take your advice. I'm going to go after that actor thing. I, I wanted to do that as a child, but... Then life got in the way and will no longer. Thank you, Booby. Well, I'm glad you finally decided to listen to me. I don't even know what to do with my free time now. That quantum computer took a long time to make, y'all. Well, just start where you're at. Tonight, you can pick the movie. delightful thank you Aww. um so thank you so much you can shuttle out the next group will shuttle in um to make sure that everyone understands and is clear they didn't know about the spatula until this morning so the playwrights when they wrote their masterpieces last night they did not know what the random prop was going to be or i don't even think i told them that we were going to be doing a prop at all so yeah, the creative use of prop is is literally like the creative use of all these spatulas is entirely up to these teams, and I have just been overwhelmed and amazed by what you can do with a good spatula. So, um, do we have everybody? Looks like we do. Rebecca, 
You're still in this. You need to move. There we there go. go. Now yeah. we're good to go. All right. Uh, pinning real quick, see if this works. All right, fingers crossed on the pinning. We haven't had, we've had mixed success with the pinning on Zoom, but we're working on it. We're trying really, really hard. But uh, yeah, the, uh, you know, Zoom's still foreign to all of us. As much as we all have been on it, we've been trying our best to keep it moving along. Um, while he does that, the uh, this next show is by my lovely husband, Michael. Yay, Michael Weems, uh, who very kindly let me do a smattering or scattering on my birthday. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, my darling husband. Um, the... We, we, okay. Uh, the name of the play is All Rise. It's directed by Erica Smith. It stars the talents of Audrey Burkhart, Autumn Clark, Ty Fisher, and Kevin Sebastian. Uh, the genre is a fairy tale. Josh, we good? We're all good. We're all good. All right. I'm going away. Enjoy the show. Once upon a time, there lived a sad prince, Prince Quaggy of Hothmast. He had a not so unusual problem that faces many men in that age demographic, but none of them were in line to be king. Quaggy needed to find a suitable partner and so far none could, well, stir a revolt in his trousers. As the hourglass precariously empties, his nerves and the pressure to find the one rise. Oh, rise for Queen Philippa. Clear the hall. I need to talk to Quaggy alone. Mama, please. Uh, you've taken another available princess who comes from amazing stock and you've wasted her. They don't grow on trees, son. I am aware. Thank you. It's not a joke, Quaggy. All of these girls, Princess Penelope, Princess Rose, oh, Duchess Eleanor, all with the same complaint. Mama, that's enough. Uh, these girls are supposed to be the most attractive in the kingdom, Quaggy. Of course, Mama. It's just this, there's something missing. Love, perhaps? <laughs> No, don't be ridiculous. These girls were selected for their inheritance, and if they happen to be a looker, that's just the cherry on top. <laughs> D did you and Papa love each other first? Oh, of course not. We hated each other. I had the southernmost villa all to myself for the first three years. <laughs> of course, things change. Uh, I gave him a son, and he gave me a hall pass. What's a hall pass? Hmm. Nothing, dear, nothing. Uh, have you tried those pills that uh, Dr. Gears gave you? Yes, Mama. But nothing. I'll have him double your dose. No, 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 Mama. The problem, the problem is the women. They're, they're vapid. They giggle when they don't know the answer to basic questions. And when we're intimate, I feel nothing. Uh, well... It's all right. I believe in you. Believe in you, Quaggy. We'll find the girl. And if we don't? Mm, Papa will ship you off as an ambassador to some far-off, uh, godforsaken country. Uh, but we'll make sure to keep you on the holiday card list. I'm doomed. Mm. Now, I'm informed there's one more comely candidate this evening. Mm. Try your best. Take a pill. Take two. <laughs> Think of the throne. Think of power. Think of uh, the country's unwavering deference to your every word. Well, I shouldn't be thinking about the girl. Heavens <laughs> no! <laughs> Here comes Papa. <laughs> I wish you luck. All rise. Will you stop saying that? Eh. For King Reginald. How in the world did you waste all another princess, Innie? I've asked you to stop calling me that, Papa. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> oh, what was that girl earlier this week? Oh, right, Princess Eleanor. She said that when it came down to hit the sheets, your business was pretty much an Innie. 
it, it was cold. All I can say, kid, it ain't the jeans. I've got bastards everywhere. <laughs> Hell, just the other day I was on a fox hunt and I saw a kid that had that same twinkle in his eye as your old man. Boom, bastard. <laughs> oh, wonderful, you must be so proud. Yeah, but I'm not. What the hell are we going to do with you? Just give me up as a lost cause. Don't you want to be king? You're great at the tactical stuff. You've got a fantastic financial head on your shoulders, much better than me. I mean, sure, there's just, there's just so much pressure. Oh, I'm going to be real with you. You don't have to love them. You don't have to listen, just barely get along. Don't be mean, but you don't have to spoil them either. And then, then you can keep a little fun fun on the side. <laughs> like Mama's whole pass. She said, what now? Oh, hell no. <clears throat> Lesson one, Emmy. <clears throat> It's not hypocrisy if it's the pursuit of something you want and you don't want others to have. That's just being the king. <laughs> I'm so confused. Oh, did your mama tell you that you've got one more princess today? Yes. Ah, all right. Let's get this one right. Ah, she comes from good stock. Very interested in racing and horses. Her looks are, you know, our inheritance is through the roof. <laughs> You'd be setting me straight up until my end of my ruling days. All right, all you've got to do is smile and listen, or just nod and pretend, and pray that somehow she can get a rise out of you. But after this one, We've scrapped the barrel empty and my family name, which goes back over 15 generations and likely control of this country will have died with you. No pressure, any. <laughs> I hate this. I hate everything. All, all of this pressure makes every day feel like an, like an out of body experience. Maybe it's better that I fail. All, all of the stress will be gone. I'll, I'll, I'll never been king and, and, and that'll be okay. I, I wanted to be a king when I grew up, but then erectile dysfunction happened. I'm done with being a king. I'm, I'm, I'm done with these pills. But if you experience any of the following symptoms while taking these pills, including but not limited to shortness of breath, no breath at all, hyperventilation, dilation, excessive sweating, no sweating, chest pains, arm pains, anywhere pains, asphyxia and or death, please contact your service provider. <laughs> You're funny. What are you doing? Uh, just looking out over the kingdom. For what? Uh, answers, I guess. We must look to the heavens for the measure of the earth. Oh, <laughs> what is that? Jean Picard. The Star Trek guy? No, the French astronomer. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, to me, he's saying that if we pray and have reverence for the unknown, we can start to understand everything that's around us or something like that. My French is rusty. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm Quaggy, Prince of Half-Mast. Most gentlemen in your position would introduce themselves as future king. Uh, let's just say things aren't shaping up that way. I'm Princess Anna of Ironcockshire. Would you like to give me a tour of my future kingdom. <laughs> Aren't you the confident one? Confident or knowing. Look at them strolling the gardens, holding hands. Impossible. He might just be built differently than you. Perhaps, but that doesn't mean he's built 
fit to lead. I don't know, but maybe that's okay. Uh, you know, to look at him. <laughs> oh, and apparently you've had all the fun. You're uh, <laughs> We've talked about this, Reggie. Did we? After your third bastard. Oh. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> they I do all blur together after a while, though, don't they? All the years. Yes, yes, I suppose. And all the offspring, the lovers. Uh, but we are still together. Uh, perhaps it's for the best. Let's say this girl. Uh, Princess Anna. Let's say she's the one. Uh, Sir, he will rule differently than you. He will be kind and gentle, thoughtful. That's not how we dominated the peace accord, Philippa. Uh, things will be different, but we'll surround him with the best advisors possible. He'll learn. And what about us? Oh, look, a clandestine kiss. Oh, and another one on the cheek. Oh, <laughs> she's the one. <laughs> <clears throat> what about us? In the increasing likelihood that this girl is the one, we step aside. We take on separate duties that keep us personally very far apart, but arrange for photo shoots um, around the holidays to keep up appearances. So that's it. Do you have a different suggestion? No. There you have it. Oh, Princess Anna, you've had the grand tour. What did you think? Beautiful. I'm going to marry this woman. <laughs> Wonderful. Well done. Uh, does she know about your... Um... We've deduced in a private corner of the garden that that will not be a problem for us going forward. <laughs> oh, fantastic news. Oh, waiting for the other shoe. I'll be abdicating the throne. Oh, Innie. What, are you quite sure? This isn't what I want. It's not what either of you want either. He's right. What will you do? We have no idea. That's the beautiful part of it. We'll figure it out along the way. Together. Uh, well, it's not what you would have expected. But it's our happily ever after. From a slightly different point of view. In the end, it wasn't legacy or wealth that mattered. It was understanding which grew into love. The throne was indeed abdicated, but in the end, it was the best choice for all. Princess Anna and Prince Quaggy fell in love and created their own world, full of love, family, and decidedly throbbing erections. The end. As you know, a play is not a party till you end it with the words throbbing erection. That's a fairy tale if I ever heard one. Oh, thank y'all so much. Good job. Woo! All right. So we are moving right along. Do, 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 do. Loose and fancy free. Uh, oh, this is a three person cast. Josh, we good? Give me just a second. Oh, we're almost there. Yay! I, it was so great to see Autumn. We were commenting in the in the chat for the YouTube live about, you know, it's it's almost not a show if Autumn not carting around a ginormous glass of wine in the show. So <laughs> you stayed true to character, girlfriend, and it was fantastic. We are good to go. All right, so we have now Nicholas Garlic. 
And I say that because of the title. Wedged in the Walmart, Chapter 17, Covidians, Walmartians, and Frozen Chicken Nuggies, and Chapter 18. Everybody Google it because that's why the Walter is salty by Nicholas Gerlich. It is directed by Ramina Mirazavi. Um, sorry, Ramina, I'm going to get it right by your wedding, I swear to God. Uh, the actors are Marion Dreechick, Brian Chambers, and Sarah Keller, and the genre is clearly a serial adventure. Add in among the frozen food from the Walmart greeter. He's after me to take my temp like some COVID grim reaper. This place is large as an acre. I think I lost him on aisle 10, but now I'm finding the toilet paper. One thing I've got to do is find it again. One thing I've got to find to have a Christmas time, a baby Yoda for my wife and mine. I'll find you and make you mine. Coming round the corner, doing all my dinner shopping, riding in my Walmart cart. This shopper isn't stopping. I come up to frozen foods. What's up with this crazy dude? He's looking at me. I can't believe this horrible Walmartian riding on a cart with ease. I'm glad it's not a donkey, but his size isn't the problem. His face looks like a goblin. And I could see his unpretty smile because his mask was under his nose. His nose, I froze. And not just because I'm in the freezer. What the hell, Make Why Can't you see that I'm a cripple? Or are you gonna stand up pointing at me with your hard ass nipples? I wanted to run, but where could I go? His face was covered in COVID. There's a lake on the floor and his clothes and his mask. I noted. I'm getting some chicken. His tongue started licking. He reached in the freezer to make that dinner fine. And then that's when the snot started to shine. His nose started dripping all over the chicken. That's when I saw, it's just so wrong. The man had a diaper under a thong. Today I felt confident even though I'm incontinent. I'm shopping at Walmart so I don't have to be choosy. Hey son, are you okay? You look a little woozy. That's when I noticed I was still bleeding all over the aisle. I must have opened a wound and got I just for a little while. Some chick saw me with Yoda. She was sipping a soda. And then she pulled a straw and stabbed me and my, stole my kid's present. And I patched it up. And well, now it's the present. Can I get some help over here? This guy looks a little unwell. Excuse me, sir. Oh, hell. Can I get your temperature? Why me? I'm a regular. Oh, sorry, sir. I didn't mean you. I meant the guy right there. Well, good, because that makes it fair. You can't take mine. You don't have the right. Don't make me get up and put up a fight. You're regular, so we don't care. This guy's stalking me like the predator. So I ran and I ran. It felt like a mile till I made it to the sports aisle. I hid in a tent for safety. It was bigger on the inside, like some Doctor Who crazy shit. But who cares? I just needed to hide. I wonder where he went just now. I'm just doing my job, okay? Maybe it'll get better and he'll be distracted and then he'll walk away. Oi, I think he jumped into that tent. It's one of our better ones. I think I'll take his temp and see if he wants to buy one. He's not getting better. So I pulled out my Beretta. But it wasn't strapped and they still don't know if they want to sell some guns, so no. So I had to pray to Santa and I pulled out a banana. He's walking toward the canvas. He's nearing the canvas. He's going to open the canvas. I'm behind the canvas. There's a hand on my arm, making sure I do no harm. Now look away, this story's getting kooky. Hand on my arm belongs to Snooky. He opened the canvas and looked inside, but no one was there, at least to him, because we had to hide. It's like a cavern in here. Thankfully, he's nowhere near. <sighs> Aren't you supposed to be on the Jersey Shore? Say no more. I'm missing our reunion special and they really need me. I'm the most famous, but I'm busy hiding. Why are you hiding? I'm trying not to get killed by some hoe. Oh. I know. It's like being stuck in North Korea. I should have gone to Ikea. They won't put up with this. They smite a bitch like you flipped a switch and then your butt is gone. Whoa, I said. 
Is that Kia some murder haven? Didn't you? No. I'll tell you a story that'll leave you shaken. The International Killing Equipment and Amenities. They call it Ikea because the founder made some enemies. I said, more. She said, it's some guy named Thor. He kept telling people, I'll kill you. So they shortened it up a bit. I kill ya, I kill ya, I kill ya. We waited in the tent until the coast was clear and eventually it seemed like no one was near. So we left the tent when it got quiet. That feeling was there like I had to run, but I, I had to deny it because she was gone. Wrong. <laughs> and out from aisle 18, I swear now, I've seen it all. She came out like a wrecking ball. Isn't this timely? Turns out to be Miley. That's the who who wants me to go. Haven't I seen you before? Oh, you're the chick that stabbed me and stole my Yoda in chapter three. Uh, I disagree. It was for me. This Yoda's reserved. I called ahead. But first, I gotta make her dead. Not until you give me back my Yoda. You're not getting my Yoda. Now move. I said, no. She said, move. I said, no. Bitch, move. I moved. Then Snooky took my banana and aimed it at Miley's navel. She got a twitch. She was ready to crack. She looked a bit unstable. You know what you did. I'm getting my revenge, bitch, for trying to steal my man. Damn! I never stole your man or any of your clan, so let me go. No, ho, I said, whoa, you're going to die today. And then, yeah, I'm going to party on your grave. I never met a Hemsworth, so I'm sorry, I don't know. Not him. It was even more years ago. Then who? You know. No. Nick. Oh, shit. Are you serious? This feud is totally bogus. You're about to kill this woman here over one of the brothers, Jonas? He saw you and knew you were the one. You got to him and you crossed a line. That was back in 2009. I could have gotten married, but then Snooky happened. And now I'm a vegetarian. I wanted to be a veterinarian when I grew up, but I got these big tits instead. And now I got tall hair and I'm tan everywhere. And now I'm getting to the slapping. Then things got so bumpy, she was on her like a squirrel monkey. <laughs> and now they're fighting and all this attention, they're attracting. So I shot once up in the air and away I started blasting. What is your intention? Just wanted your attention. Now move from here before I have to shoot you. You wouldn't dare. My fans would come and ruin you. Put the banana down. I'll bust a cap in Hannah Montana. We're in a standoff. I'm about to lose my flow. Miley's ready to bounce with baby Yoda in tow. Then here, the story gets stranger. Snooky pelted her with toilet paper. She's throwing <laughs> my toilet paper. She's wasting good paper. And Miley's flailing. She hits my face. Don't hit my face. That's my money maker. So I throw some rolls back and just hit her in the tip because we all know she's a faker. And the rolls they unroll. Oh no, now Snooky looks like a mummy. It's funny. Oh honey, I'm leaving you headless like a dummy. Oh, I hope you heard her. She's talking about a murder. But I was confused and scared. I didn't know what to do. Then she looked at me and said, After this, I'm coming after you. I'm gonna die. I didn't expect this was how my life would end. Caught in the middle of a fight between Sagittarians. There's no escape. Snooky's eyes were getting blackened. And then the most amazing, blazing, unfazing, raising thing happened. Oh, she's starting to choke. I think she might croak. It's my baby Yoda. She's being choked by my baby Yoda. I'm being saved by my baby Yoda. Mm. I'm dying here. I lost my breath. 
feels like my lungs exploded. Is this the force at work or did I just get COVID? And then she backed up and she's hit by a truck. But it wasn't a truck. It's a weird subversion. I recognize that song and the spit. She got run over by the cart of a wall Martian. Blood everywhere. Hurry, help me hide the body. Girl, you're crazy. This isn't like my hobby. I can't be found like on a murder scene. I got three priors. Now help me clean. Oh, somebody please. I'm in a squeeze. Who do I have to appease to get back to the Jersey breeze? Oh my God. Hello? Oh no. What seems to be the problem? If you can clean this up, that would be awesome. I can with ease. Just need some things to figure out her disease. Excuse me. No. Could you help me here? I need to move a body and you're the only one near. I'm stuck in this cesspit. Well, I run to the exit. Well, we'll check while she's breathless, but first, let me check your wellness. So I ran and I ran and I didn't have time to find my kids present while I was running from COVID and a murder intent. Where's my baby Yoda? I'm lost, it's getting colder. I'm looking over my shoulder. Why am I getting colder? I've lost my Yoda and I don't know where to begin. But now I see I'm back where foods are frozen. I have to get TP again. Will it ever be the end, the end, the end? Oh, goodness. All y'all come out and you the huge bow. Oh, I, I have no words. That was fabulous. That was so much fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was beyond crazy. Oh, seeing all these wonderful shows leads me to believe that yes, virtual theater can happen. You just to be super creative and then throw things like spatulas at your friends and see what they come up with. And it has been, if nothing else, absolutely amazing. Um, Josh, we ready? Uh, just a second. Got to pin some people in play. Working on it. Um, but yes, the fun thing about doing, okay. uh, yes, thank you. The fun thing about doing scattering and being able to be so remote is like, for example, Mary Ann Trejic, who the last time did a smattering with us was the Sex Olympics for Smattering X, uh, is in the DC area. So it was great to have you come back and play Snooky for us. So that's the wonderful thing, at least about being forced to do things remotely is that we got to play with a lot of people we haven't gotten to see your work with in years, like Kevin Sebastian, who worked with Michael and I at Fair Play in New York for number, a number of years. And it's been so wonderful to have you be part of the War of the Words and then here with the scattering. So this, there may be hope that we do more of these in the future, even if there is no reason to make us other than that we get to reunite and do things with friends. So moving on, this time, oh, you're back. Hey. Sebastian, who worked with Michael and I. It's all right. You, you you came in when I was still talking. Now you neither either needing to go to another room. Yeah, or leave. There we go. All right. This time it's personnel and Amanda Cat Kit Mystery by David L. Williams, who affectionately is also known as the bad boy of the War of the Words. It's directed by Amy Todoroff. It stars Sophia Carraro, Elizabeth Grant, and Troy Rice. And the genre clearly is a mystery suspense. Yeah, I uh, just Grab the file I sent over, Chip. We'll uh, we'll finish up. Thanks for uh, sticking around after the meeting to talk to Chip and me, Christopher. I appreciate it. Sure. I'm sure you'll be back soon. Mm. Uh, so how how long were we going? By the way. Oh, two hours, Carl. Wow. Didn't feel like it to me. Uh, this won't be much longer. I, yeah, maybe I should just start and uh, let Chip catch up. Okay. 
it is that time of year again. Performance evaluations. We're doing them this year? It's November. Well, I know, but, you know, it's 2020. Well, we can't let everything that's happened beat us, right? Good. That is the Fred Town Corp spirit. So, uh, looking over the last year, there have been a lot, a lot of performance issues. Such as? Well, uh, the first thing I noticed was your demeanor. Uh, you've not been a very chipper presence at work, and yeah, I'm not talking about you, Chip. Chip. Chippy coming back. Has anybody been chipper lately? Well, you know, Ronald's always been kind of a sad sack, so if there are any changes to his demeanor, I sure haven't noticed. Oh, good lord. Are you doing okay over there, Chip? Anyway, your demeanor is an issue. It's been a rough year. Okay. Of course it has, but I mean, it's been that way for all of us. I have to judge you individually on how you have responded and you, Christopher, have not responded well. All right. Also, uh, the timing of your work has been troublesome. I haven't missed an assignment yet. Nothing's been late. No, quite the opposite. You've, uh, She's gotten into everything in way too early. Too early? It's 3 a.m. and I'm hearing ding, ding, ding from my computer every email after email after email waking me up. And it's not considerate at all, especially after we had to set back our clocks, which was, was a lot. Okay. What else? You're really not taking this in the spirit it's intended. And what spirit is that? To prepare you for your next job. You know, wherever that is. Well, hold on. Am I getting fired right now? No, I don't like to use that word. It's so ugly. And Chip, are you getting back here anytime soon? Chip is not coming back. Chip is dead. Oh, God. I'm so sorry for your loss. It's not my loss. Why would it be my loss? What do you know? Sorry, I, I just thought you were Chip's wife. Chip was never married. How come you didn't know that? I'm the one asking the questions here. Who are you? I just said I'm the one asking the questions here. Right, but... Just this once, I'll allow it. Amanda Catkit, public detective. Detective. Oh, what's, um, that's an interesting job title. Uh, yes. You were going to ask a question, weren't you? <laughs> um, no, I'm, I just never heard of a public detective before. Right, it's like a private detective, but out in the open. Chip has been murdered in this locked room, and you're the last people to see him alive. Everybody's a suspect. I certainly didn't do it. Tell me why. Oh, Chip was my best friend. Well, I'm the one who gave him his nickname. You know, his first day at the firm, I ate lunch with him and he was, was eating chips, but uh, potato chips. Yeah, if I remember correctly. And I called him Chip from that day on. And, uh, you know, he hated it at first. But, um, he grew to hate it slightly less. Uh-huh. And why didn't you do it, Christopher? Because I'm here, across town, like a half an hour away from wherever he lives? That's an alibi, not an excuse. I mean, aren't they the same thing? Uh, no. <laughs> Dictionary.com is telling me that an alibi is a defense by an accused person of having been elsewhere at the time an alleged defense was committed. But, uh, oh, yeah, well, an excuse is ground or reason for excusing or being excused. I want to know why you didn't kill him, not how you didn't kill him. Because, because I'm not a murderer. Uh-huh. Both interesting excuses, yes. This is the hardest case I've ever had to solve. I am glad you're on the case, Miss Catkit. 
friendship was a good friend, and I am glad to know that the world's greatest public detective is here to solve his murder. You've heard of her? Not before today. But I've never heard of any other public de detectives either, so she must be good. I didn't always see myself as a detective. I wanted to be a taxidermist when I grew up, but, but then Thanksgiving happened. What happened at Thanksgiving? Damn it, Christy, I told you that I'm the one asking the questions here. What did Chip do for your firm? Who's the head of HR? In charge of the hours, eh? No, what? Must have rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. What with this constant clock watching? HR stands for human resources. He used humans as resources? Oh, monstrous, maybe he deserved to die. Miss Catkit, please, he was a friend. I'm just kidding, of course. All of you deserve to die. <laughs> ah, any hoots. Yes, uh, head of human resources, got it. And um, why were you meeting with Chip today? Oh, it's the time of year for performance reviews. Oh, so that would make you, young man, Christopher Lynch. Ah. Did I impress you? Amazing detective work, right? Like how in the world does she do it and all that? <laughs> my, my name's under the picture. Oh, well played, Christopher Lynch. You're as clever and bedeviling as one of the films by your famous uncle. <laughs> I'm not related to the director, David Lynch. Well, that certainly doesn't help your alibi. Well, I couldn't have killed Chip. I was on a set with my Uncle David. You know, you could have said that. <laughs> okay, I think I'm gonna go. Good luck with all of this, Carl. If you turn off your computer now, the next sound you will hear are the sirens of the police coming to take you to the slammer. Are you saying that he did it, Miss Catkit? He murdered my acquaintance, Chip Chippendale? Well, I'm about to tell you who did it. Please, no spoilers. Apologies. While I've been sitting here pretending to make perfectly normal snog talk with you to nadering nabobs, I've been surreptitiously reading over Chip's personnel files. Yeah, be careful with those. I'm still talking. I've been reading them and I can see beyond a shadow of a doubt that the murderer is Christopher. Well, you're supposed to gasp, but of course you're not going to because you spoiled the surprise. Again, all I can do is apologize. Christopher should be the one to apologize. Or should I say Christopher Burns Lynch? Or do you deny that that is your full name? Why would I deny that? Well, a man who has two forms of violence in his name and we're supposed to believe that you're not a murderer? Uh, Burns is my mother's maiden name. Are you related to the old, unfunny comedian George Burns? Uh, what a cinematic lineage you have, but it all ends with you and the hooskow for this vicious murder. The way I see it, you knew that Chip was going to fire you, so you were going to kill him before he got the chance. <laughs> That's exactly it, Miss Catkit. Chip and I didn't see eye to eye on much. Often, hated each other's guts, but we both agreed it was time to trim the fat here at Brett Bian Corp. I meant to tell you, your company has such a beautiful name, just rolls off the tongue. So what do you have to say for yourself, Christopher Burns Lynch, or should I say Christopher Burns Lynch murders? Uh, this is insane. Look, I'm sorry, Chris, Chip is dead, but I didn't do it. I wouldn't even know how to do it. I've been here the whole time. Hmm, a master criminal would find a way. I'm not a master criminal. I mean, I got fired anyway, so what would be the point of even killing him? You, you were fired? Yeah, Carl fired me today. Was this before or after Chip died? I don't know, um, it was after we heard that thud. <laughs> This changes nothing. Really? Are you surprised? I mean, of course it changes no Wait, did I say this changes nothing? <laughs> I meant everything. This changes everything. Oh, silly.
silly cat kid. You'd lose your head if it wasn't surgically attached to your body in a great groundbreaking medical procedure, right? <laughs> um, Carl, where do you think you're going? What? Uh, nowhere. I, I've done nothing wrong. Uh-huh. You were telling me to be careful with those files, and I know why. A public detective with a history like mine knows my way around these poisons. Like on these personnel files, they've clearly been soaked with batrachotoxin and enough to fell even a Albanian man, a notoriously difficult group of people to poison. But you knew that and you sent the file over. You killed Chip Chippendale. Yes, it's true. Not only was he the head of HR, I suspected he had a side business where he was in control of the hours too. It all came to a head last month when he reminded us to set our clocks back. He was giving us an extra hour? No man should have that much power. He had to be stopped. Take him away, boys. Well, looks like you're free to go, Mr. Lynch. Free to go look for a job in this economy. Uh, don't be too sure. As I said, I read your file and Mr. Chippendale wasn't suggesting you to be fired. He wanted to give you a raise. And from what I hear, a VP job just opened up. <laughs> <laughs> you're really something, Miss Cat Kit. <laughs> well, if you ever find yourself in need of a public detective, Here's my card. Oh, that sounds great. Wait, wait, how did you do this? I'm a magical being that transcends all space and time. Well, that's how I got into this locked room and knew about the murder. Did I not mention that? <laughs> okay, so you gotta go by. Wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> Uh, Liz, you've got to come in. Curtain call, Liz, you got a curtain call. Hi, everybody. Yay. Um, so, fun fact, when I used to watch quarantine videos and see everybody with like crazy wigs and props and costumes and everything like that, I'm like, that's insane. Who has all that? And then when you do something like a scattering where everybody has to do this stuff from home and they pull out glittery backdrops and crazy wigs and corsets and full makeup and then you know what i'm reminded yeah theater people that's who has that stuff theater people your people my people use but my people totally my peoples all right so y'all can scatter on off either back into your break room or or to leave the zooms so for our final show so while they are getting set up um just a reminder that as soon as the show is over we're not going to be leaving the Zoom yet because what we're going to do is give you a chance to vote. So for 10 minutes after this last show ends, you can go to conemanwriting.com, click on scattering voting, and you'll see on that page is a ballot. Vote. For 10 minutes, you get to vote. And then as soon as those 10 minutes are done, we're going to count them all up. And then we're going to award cones. So which nobody is here to get them other than, you know, me. so it's fine. It'll be shipped later. All right, Josh, do we have everybody for the final show of the evening? We are good to wrap up. All right. Our final show for this evening is Transitions by Connor Farrell. It is directed by Steve Carpentier. The actors are Steve Brown, Karen Fulda, Jonathan Gonzalez, and Nicole Nesson. And the genre <gasps> is coming of age. Growing up, I wasn't the best kid. Treat others the way you'd like to be treated, Caleb. That's the only way we progress in this world. Do you understand? That's my mom, Amber. Sweet lady, huh? She worked so hard, I hated coming home and finding out that she knew that I'd been behaving badly. 
you need to stop spending your lunch money trying to convince those kids to stand in ant piles. <sighs> they like it. They say they love itching all the bites and the money is just the cherry on top of the itchy dessert. Your mama wasn't born yesterday, son. The golden rule. If us people don't treat other people kindly and vice versa, the whole system comes down. My dad died when I was a baby. I never knew him. Your daddy, Jordan. He was a hardworking man. Wasn't the brightest, but he was the sweetest. Oh, he had the biggest heart. He was wild about you. And we were very much in love. It was just my mom and me and she did her best. She was my hero. She guided me with what she thought was right. She helped me to see the world through a different lens. And I wanted to be a productive member of society. I want you to think long and hard about the profession you choose. I mean, making money is great, but if you don't believe in what you're doing when you make it, you will never be fulfilled. That's it. That was the moment when I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a firefighter when I grew up. But then puberty happened. Sheba wore a lot of black and she said she was really into Satan. Oh, there was something about her. I, I don't know, she just, she always knew what to say. You wanna ditch class and go make out? I have never met anyone so confident and interesting. What I remember most was the rich conversations. <laughs> Do you wanna see my boobs? I guess I started to see the world in a different way. I, I mean, okay, I probably compromised my beliefs. I tried faking it at first, you know, to, to keep up and just show her that uh, I was cool. I bet he has an awesome red dick. What? <laughs> Who? Oh, uh, Mr. Kool-Aid, huh? <laughs> <laughs> What? Mr. Kool-Aid? <laughs> you fucking dweeb. No. Satan. I bet Satan has a cool red dick. Probably has tattoos and shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, probably a real uh, radical crimson donger, huh? <laughs> uh, probably could, like, get hard and play a double neck guitar solo with that thing, huh? <laughs> Great, Caleb. I've been thinking long and hard about this. So when I ask you, know that this isn't just some spur the moment ask. Sure, anything, what is it? If you die and become a demon, I want you to possess me. I will possess every inch of you. <laughs> That's the day. That's the day that I committed. When I grow up and die, I want to be a devil. Everything seemed in order. And then the train accident. I'd gotten into an argument with some jerks about who was the strongest and I told them, I am so strong, I can push a train right off its fucking tracks. You lie. Anytime, anywhere. Prove it now at the train tracks. So there I was, standing on the train tracks, winding up my fist for the punch of a lifetime and... The train killed me dead. Splattered all across the place. Medically, my remains would be described as Useless to a necrophiliac. <laughs> then there was the funeral. I thought losing my husband, Jordan, would be the hardest thing I'd ever go through. But I was wrong. Mom took it hard, real hard. 
Before I continue, I would regret not mentioning another speech at the funeral from my drunk aunt. Today is a dark, dark day. Dark indeed. Caleb was not only a cool dude, but also he kind of hot, right? I mean, I'm not saying that I would have done anything inappropriate, but huh, put a gun to my head. I'd let him hit it before I go. Just want to say, Caleb, I guess God had some important plans for your hot ass. The end. Wasn't that awful. Anyway, I found myself dead just waiting for something to happen when... Are you Caleb? Yes. Hit by a train, Caleb? Yes. Who says you were, uh, let's see, uh, trying to punch a train off the tracks? Yes. Why would you do that? Prove to some jerks that I was strong as fuck. Okay, uh, checks out. You are who I thought you are. Well, what is this? You, you, are, I, you are dead. And this... Oh, shit! Is this, this. a death processing room? Uh, no, not exactly. Like, do I find out if I become an angel or a devil? Was I bad enough to be an angel or bad enough to be a devil? Or am I just a tortured soul? Oh, shit! You know, I gotta be a devil. I just got to. Uh, as far as devils and angels go, well, Oh I my god, I get to possess! Can I possess Sheba? Who's Sheba? Oh, she's my girlfriend. Oh, well, she was my girlfriend. On Earth. I promised I'd possess her. Uh, uh, Caleb, uh, Caleb, uh, slow down. Uh, I, I don't know about all this devil and angel stuff. Uh, maybe there's a next stage. Uh, all I know right now is... You're in the same place as me, and a lot of people. I'm a volunteer. I was assigned to help you cope with your transition. Transition? From living to what you are now. What am I? I don't know. Uh, a ghost, I, uh, I guess. A ghost? Uh, what can I do as a ghost? I mean, can ghosts possess? Uh, not that I've observed. Uh, uh, mainly, we just do a lot of observing of the world. It's remarkable. A lot of observing? That sounds boring and lame. There are perks. Like what? Like, uh, uh, maybe your friends are getting together and watching a scary movie, and uh, uh, maybe you muster up enough strength to whisper, Get out! Or something. <laughs> then you see your friends get scared. <laughs> it's a hoot! Oh, man, this is hell. Not quite. I need to tell you one more thing. This is a kind of lawless place, Caleb. There aren't any real rules of structure. What do you mean? Well, what different ghosts do with their freedom is up to them. Oh, I see. Before I turn you loose, is there anywhere you'd like to go? Yeah, I... I want to go to my mom's house. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to go home. Hey, while we head over, I want to hear something really nuts. Sure. Uh, Marilyn Monroe died, right? Uh, uh, she was here for a bit. No way. Yeah, and I welcomed her and helped her transition. Uh, wonderful woman, uh, much better than you read about. Anyway, do you want to know the only place she wanted to go? I haven't a clue. The White House bathroom. Wait, why? She thought it was the funniest thing to watch, watching Jackie Kennedy take a shit. Insane, <laughs> man. <laughs> Ever since we refer to that as doing a Monroe's. <laughs> a sweet girl, uh, she wasn't here for long. Through that door is your mother. I'm ready. No. 
No, it can't be. I I'm going to wake up. I I'm going to wake up from all of this. This can't be. <laughs> oh man, this is hard. Was it one enough? What was enough, you son of a bitch? Shh. You took away everything from me. I hate you. <laughs> it's okay, baby, I'm here. <laughs> Wait. Wait, who is that? You gave us a beautiful baby boy. Dad? Hello, son. I, uh, I'd hoped that we'd... I love you so much. Bob. Bob, it's okay. Dad and I are here. We'll be with you. I'll take a big bow. Yay. All right. All of the beautiful, beautiful people uh, who are watching, uh, take 10 minutes. I'm literally going to start a clock. Uh, you can go to codemanrunning.com and you'll see at the top there's a page that says matter or scattering voting. And there's also a link to the program in case you need a refresher as to who some of these beautiful faces are. Um, it, it doesn't li doesn't list who plays each part because there was no way to know in advance who was going to be taking each parts. Like, how was I going to know they were going to gender swap in the Western, which was delightful. Uh, so take a moment, take 10 moments, 10 minutes to vote, a lot of categories, a lot of plays, a lot to process. But while you do that, uh, we're going to put in some soothing music for you, some fabulous music written by our very own Sandra Peck Ramsey. And um, yeah, so we'll, Josh, you want to share screen and give people some time to vote. <laughs> Technology. Josh, you're on mute, so if you're playing music, nobody can hear it. I'm trying to get the mute the music going still. Ah, okay. okay. Yeah, I can play music if you want. I'm trying. Yeah, go ahead. Or we can listen to Helen sing, which is also super awesome. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I, just a couple of cocktails, so enjoy. Uh, absolutely, but uh, we will. We will cycle through some of the greatest hits here. Yeah, unfortunately, I am having issues streaming and downloading. No worries. You're good.
Oh, jeez. Wait. Get it. No! Okay. Turn this off. You can't. Uh, okay. I have on my laptop. Okay. I'm playing my music. <laughs>
No!
All right, beautiful people. Uh, we are done with voting. I'm about to. So do you have like 10 seconds left to get your ballots in while I try to convince somebody on this Zoom call to take over DJing duties while I count? So who wants to play some music? Anything? 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 Anyone? I have other music. I just couldn't get that downloaded. So I'm good. You play whatever you want, Josh. Ooh, do you have my favorite song in the world? Well, uh, I mean, we course. are done with voting. I'm about to. All right. And then whoever's on the Zoom. I have to get your ballots in while I you try to convince YouTube. somebody on this Zoom call to take over DJing duties while I count. So who wants to play some music? Anything. All right. We're about to start muting everybody on this call right now. Anyone? <laughs> I have other music. I just couldn't get that downloaded. Hey, Josh, can you mute everybody in the call Anyone? right now? Josh. Uh, sure. Ooh, do you have my favorite song in the world? Well, uh, we are course. done with voting. I'm about to. All right. And then whoever is on the Zoom. I have to get your ballots in while I you try to convince you. somebody on this Zoom call to take over DJing duties while I count. So who wants to play some music? Anything. All right. We're about to start muting everybody on this call right now. Anyone? <laughs> I have other music. I just couldn't get that down. Thanks, Josh. Play whatever you want. I'm going to start counting. All right. As soon as I can find it. Okay.
Killed it. Oh. What happened? I gave my love a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> the chicken? Helen's the only one that can hear the music. May old acquaintance be forgot. That would be better if you knew the words. 
Brian Kondrak in a dress with toilet paper made me laugh till I pissed. And then <laughs> I came by it. underpants. And then I stunk real bad. <laughs> my dad hates my guts. Keep your eye on the grand old flag. <laughs> is a lot faster when you computerize the entire process it takes less time to count through 78 ballots but yay 78 ballots lots of people seeing all of you beautiful beautiful folks so real quick before people get um sad not that anybody's gonna get sad because we're literally playing for cones and we do let's all take a picture josh can you get the setting to where it'll show 49 it'll show everybody there's a video setting down 49 through 78 ballots. Okay. Yay, 78 ballots. An idea. Oh, go to video. Go to stop video, like the little carrot, go to video, and it'll say maximum participants displayed per screen in gallery view. And you can bump it up to 49. Look, the Garrelys are together. Y'all are so cute. Here we go. Is it going to work? Maybe? Yes. Maybe it, won't. Maybe it won't do it midway. Well, poop. We'll just have to take pictures. Uh, it just did for me. So here, you know, let me make you host. Oh, make me host. We'll flip back and forth. I popped uh, into another little square. Are you square sharing? Now we're square sharing for sure. At Super Cow, I love you guys <laughs> so much. Because I want to take no, it won't let me do it. It hates me. That's fine. Well, here, I can just do a screenshot. With all right, take a big screenshot. That's all it is, anyway. Take one big screenshot. Everybody smile. Got it. Beautiful. All right. Uh, thank you all for for participating in our very first scattering. It's a fundraiser for us to keep our little home. We've already raised uh, up, we've already raised over five thousand dollars for our little space, and uh, it is. Greatly, greatly appreciated, all of y'all. So um, I have the cones. They'll be coming to some of you guys. Yeah, well, they'll be coming to some of you guys. So, um, sure. let, let's just start at the beginning. Uh, the winner for best use of genre is the Ballad of Setback Shane. Welcome, all of you people. Way to go, Cassie! Woo! Yeah, where's Cassie? I was like, oh, Cassie needs to... Cassie, since you're the playwright, there's a cone that's going to have a little sticker on it coming to you that says, best use of genre in scattering the first. Oh, my God. Where Cheers, everybody. I'm going to drink this beer to all of you guys. Yeah, you okay. drink like crazy lady. <laughs> all right. Um... So next is the best use of the celebrity birthday. Um, I think that we're all kind of, I think everyone saw this one coming. It's uh, Nicholas Garlic for Wedged in the Walmart for your use of Snooky, which I guess isn't really, I mean, you just happen to be born on the same day as Snooky and used her. So yay. So there'll be another cone headed to the Garleys. Oh, Miley Cyrus. Oh, my, wait, what? 
true. Miley Cyrus. Snooki and Miley oh, it's Cyrus. True. I share a birthday with both Snooki and Miley Cyrus. And Doctor Who. And Doctor Who. Oh well, yeah. Dang. Look at that. Um, nickname origin story uh, goes to Ballad of Setback Shane. So good job, Cassie. Her first smattering she wrote for, and look at her. Yeah, two for two. Oh, two for three. Gonna get so right. drunk. Yeah, get wasted. <laughs> Um, the best, uh, what does my note say? Okay. The best transfer basically of some item from one frame to another, uh, also goes to the Ballot of Setback Shane. Um, I'm not sure if that's a playwright award or a director award, so I'm going to mull that one over. Um, it's everybody. Take it's everybody. this drink. They all did it. Take this drink. <laughs> so, yes. Way to go, Cassie. Way yeah. to go, Jessica. Way to go, Haney. All of you beautiful people. Um, best use of line uh, goes to Michael Weems for All Rise for using erectile dysfunction. So Michael, come in here and grab your cone. He's the only one that actually gets his. That sounds dirty, Christine. I, I think he Freezing. cheated. Be careful, he might grab more than just one cone. Hey, oh. Michael, come get your cone, big boy. All the phrasing. Hey, turn your turn your camera oh, off, oh, for the oh. love of God. Yes, I know. Or don't, you know. Or don't. It's been a minute. Oh, you know, um, Damn, Michael brought his own cone into the room. <laughs> would like to watch. What? Okay. So, so the cast that looked like they had the most fun, uh, you actually don't get cones for this. I usually go to the dollar store and just pick up something and give it to all of you, which is what I'm going to do. I just haven't done it yet. So you're going to get some random crap that I find at the dollar store. It goes to the Ballad of Setback Shane. So good job, you guys. So all of you in the cast are going to get whatever I decide to pick you up and slap a label on at the dollar store, because that's kind of how I roll. I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> All the rookies are like, we won awards. Ooh. We're so proud of you. Good. All right. So um, we move into, I guess, in the Oscars, they call them the final four. But it's the best actor, best actress, best script, and then the uh, best in show. So uh, the best, uh, we'll start with the best actress award. Um, Whitney Sangreen for I've Had the Crime of My Life Part 2. Ooh. You guys better shut your faces. Shut up. <laughs> Dude, for all the accent work that you had to do, my friend, you worked it. So, <laughs> oh my God, stop. So one of these with a label, I'll get will get dropped over to your to to your house. So congratulations. Um, the the winner of the best actor award. Uh, I'm not going to this person's house because it is too far away. Because it is for Kevin Sebastian for his role in All Rise. Woo! Uh, Shut woo! up, guys. Thank you. That's really sweet. <laughs> so you will get one of these lovingly packaged and shipped to your home. Oh, in flawless skin, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. I was reading this chat. I don't All do that much. Perfect show, guys. Skin. <laughs> um, like legit. Danny no Dahmer's coming for it. <laughs> I, I've known him for 15 years and he looks exactly the fucking same. There's it, a painting somewhere. Don't look for it. Yes. Are you a vampire? Um, all right, best script. Best script. Damn, the whole thing kind of rhymed, Nicholas. Wedged in the Walmart. So there will be another cone headed to the Gearly house uh, with the label on it for Nicholas. So good, good job. Yes, congrats, Nick. So the, the funnest part about this is that we had so many, so many freaking shows and it was, thank you all so much for participating. I think, I hope everybody had a blast. We all had a blast with it. Um, in a rare turn of events um i counted all up and that's part of the delay i had to get on a call with josh to see if we wanted to do a tiebreaker because we have a tie for best in show it's crazy we ain't never had a tie before um but so the we just josh and i decided that we'll just go ahead and award the best in show we'll have two winners for the very first scattering for best in show so for these winners, you're going to get each your own little cone that says best in show for everybody in the cast, the director and the playwright, um, as well as your own very beautiful sash that I'm going to just handwrite later at my own leisure because, you know, I'd have to go buy more ribbon now. I wasn't anticipating having to do 12. Um, 
So one is for Wedges in the Walmart. So congratulations yeah! to everybody in Wedges in the Walmart. Um, Sarah Keller. The, the full title is actually Wedges in the Walmart, Chapter 17, Covidiots, Walmartians, and Frozen Chicken Nuggies in Chapter 18. Everybody Google it because that's why the water is salty. So Nicholas Garlick, Ramina, Mary Andrew Chick, Sarah Keller, and Brian Chambers. You all will have a sash and a cone coming to you. And I demand that when you get your sash and cone, wherever you are, you take a photo of it uh, and send it to me so that we can post all the love and joy. Sarah looks like she's literally about to fucking burst. It's insane. By the way, the answer to um, the, the chapter 18 or whatever, it's whale sperm. I'm sorry. That's why this <laughs> this is literally a Snooky quote. You're welcome. I feel educated. Um, I'll wear it naked. Uh, okay, let's. Yeah, that, that that part I didn't need. Um, but to be clear, that's not the only best in show cone that is going to the Garrelly household because the tie the other one that tied was the Ballad of Setback State. <laughs> <laughs> Cassie Randall, Lauren Hanley, Brian Kondrak, Reed Halverson, Kara Gilbert, congratulations. You also will be getting your very own lovely sash, little cone with a label on it, hand packed by me. And some of you are just going to have it me throw it at you from, you know, my car into your house. So, the drive by coding. Um, it's be- good that you did a You didn't do a tiebreaker because last time Nicholas and I had plays that were close to each other, we had to get married. So yeah, it was really bitter and contentious. So does that mean kids next? (laughs) Oh no, 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 no! no. We gotta go. (laughs) So for everybody watching, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had a really good time. I mean, this is. You know, I think this goes to show to what a lot of people are worried about. You know, theater does not die just because we're in a pandemic. We, like they say in Jurassic Park, it finds a way. And when you have amazingly, incredibly talented writers and directors and actors like we have, it finds a really awesome way to put together plays in 24 hours. And it is absolutely amazing. So on behalf of Cone Man Running, our entire board, everybody's, oh, thank all y'all. Thank you. Yes. What? Best use of props. Oh shit! The special the people want to know. Wait, and Christine, while you're looking that up, they also say in Jurassic Park, "blood sucking lawyers." Your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Reminder: oh. She's a judge now. So. A judge, she can't have an opinion <laughs> on. I, I totally missed it. The it's best popular quote <laughs> is, is when you make the prop talk. So the best use of talk a prop once it transitions. I'm so sorry, Connor. I oh, didn't forget your play. It won a cone for best use of prop. Good job with the step. <laughs> so look. Brown, Steve Carpentier. Congratulations right there. Um, so again, yay, lots of little cones. Uh, lots of money raised for the theater company in our little home so we can keep it for longer because, you know, we're going to be able to do theater again. I hope you all had fun. I hope you guys all saw how wonderfully creative this can be in this medium. It's different. It feels weird, but in my heart of hearts, it still felt very smattering. The 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 real time commentary, the twenty second delayed commentary, oh, worth it to almost relive the whole damn thing to read it as it goes up. If you didn't see it, you absolutely should. Our friends all be crazy in the best way possible. So, on behalf hey. of everybody, I'm about to kill this live feed. So, to all of our just, audiences, wait, wait, thank you. We, we can we all, dance again? Uh, Christine, happy birthday, and thank you for putting this on so we could all enjoy our each other. Yay, no, Christine! Woo! Yay. Happy birthday, darling! Hey, Christine! Thanks for all the tech Woo-hoo. work, too, and everything happy birthday. that's been done today. Happy birthday, Christine! Thanks for watching. Happy birthday! Happy, happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. You all so crazy crazy now let us thank dance again. Thank you, Josh, for running everything. <laughs> what? Thank you to Josh for running the show. Yes, yeah. Josh. 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 Josh support. That Josh is the support. best. And Let save me. Give him his own cone. He <laughs> deserves his own cone yeah. for sure. Helen, he has Helen. all the cones. He got sa- he got a sash one year. Jason was- Rivas has the biggest fan base I've ever seen behind him. <laughs> Shout out to Michael Robbie for doing his whole performance with no pants on. 
What? What? You weren't supposed oh, to yeah. tell. Confirmed. How about Confirmed. all the people without shoes? We all I, knew. I yeah, lots of feet. Let me see those toes. Let me see those toes. Let me see those toes. Okay, guys. Guys. 